per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,198 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $385. Antiwar.com reports Senator Rand Paul has unveiled a draft declaration of war against the Islamic State that he intends to introduce in the Senate in December, authorizing limited ground operations against the Islamic State. Congress has not declared a single war since World War II when it declared war in the wake of Pearl Harbor. On the one hand, Senator Paul's push is seen as an aim to assert congressional authority to declare wars during an era when wars tend to be unilateral presidential decisions. Yet, his bill is being harshly criticized by anti-war groups as well, which see the draft declaration as risky, particularly to the extent that it defines limited operations well beyond what President Obama has already announced. Justin Raimondo predicted that the attempt to limit the scope was a strategy likely to backfire and simply open the door to a wider war, adding that attempts to limit the introduction of ground troops will never hold. Code Pink co-founder Medea Benjamin also criticized the move, saying that Senator Rand Paul, who has supported the Islamic State war so far, is not his father's son anymore and risks alienating supporters of Ron Paul by positioning himself as more pro intervention. Benjamin added, if people want a candidate who's going to be pro-intervention, they might as well vote for Hillary Clinton. President Obama has yet to comment on the proposal, but has expressed support for an authorization for the use of military force, a legal shorthand occasionally used in wars that fall short of formal declarations. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. USA Today reports Darren Wilson will not face charges for shooting Michael Brown. A St. Louis County grand jury declined to indict Officer Wilson for firing six shots in an August confrontation that killed the 18-year-old. The decision has been long awaited and followed writing that resembled war zone news footage in the St. Louis suburb. Prosecutor Robert McAuliffe made the announcement in an unusual nighttime presentation in a courtroom. He spoke at length about media coverage of the case and what he called the unreal reliability of eyewitness accounts. He said the grand jury weighed evidence and testimony before concluding there was no probable cause to indict the officer, saying the duty of the grand jury is to separate fact from fiction. Brown's family later released a statement saying, we are profoundly disappointed that the killer of our child will not face the consequences of his actions. They urged others who share their pain to channel their frustration in ways that will make a positive change. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Antiwar.com reports NATO officials are officially outraged at Russia again, this time because the Russian Federation signed a treaty of economic and military cooperation with its tiny neighbor, the Republic of Abkhazia. NATO is mad because it does not recognize the right of Abkhazia to exist as an independent republic and wants it eventually annexed into Georgia. They complain the treaty would not contribute to Abkhazia's ceasing to exist. Georgia complained the deal which secured military military backing for Abkhazia's continued existence amounted to a Russian annexation of Georgian soil and a violation of their sovereignty. Abkhazia's status has been disputed since the breakup of the Soviet Union. When the Soviet Union broke up, Georgia sought to include Abkhazia, arguing Soviet-granted autonomy no longer applied. The Republic of Abkhazia reasserted itself at the end of the 1992-93 war and the 2008 Russo-Georgian War, further cementing its status as an independent republic that, because of NATO-Russian tensions, no one in NATO will ever recognize. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Fact Zone.
I'm Brooke Alvarez. Our top story tonight, Congress has passed a bill naming incomprehensible shouting the official language of the United States. I'm sick and tired of listening to people who say that Americans should not know what they know, and that's not what it is, what the policy is. The red-blooded American is what we have in this day and age. Under the new law, public school classes will only be taught in incomprehensible shouting, and government agencies will no longer offer translators to non-shouting speakers. In addition, a new test will be added to the naturalization process, whereby potential immigrants must prove they have a working knowledge of incomprehensible shouting before they're granted citizenship. The movement started in 2008 with a grassroots organization called Americans for Doing It Right Because We Got It Now Because Who Else Right? Come on! This is the Onion News Network, a tomahawk of honesty in the skull of lies. Free Talk Live. 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. It's Mark with you. And Wayne. And Johnny Ray. You know, for those who haven't listened in the last three years, I suppose, four years, I don't know what the, the how long it's been, Wayne, but uh, you're a former co-host, and I was able to wrangle you in here for the night that uh, our no normal first seat host, Ian, is off. Well, it's a real pleasure to be back with you guys in the, in the seat here, and you know, I am a lot older than I was then. <laughs> I, I, I could have a stroke or a heart attack any time now. <laughs> I might need a nap in the middle of the show, too. The uh, So we met you, Ian and I uh, met you down in Florida. You, uh, you know, somehow heard Free Talk Live uh, in one of its early iterations, and uh, you had done some radio and actually some television and all kinds of stuff. So we just kind of, you know, hit it up with you, and you were one of the early hosts. It was a lot of fun. It was five years. It was it was a lot of fun. Indeed. But the, I, go ahead. Wayne. Johnny's just the, the janitor, by the way. <laughs> Wayne, you're one of my favorite co-hosts, probably. You've got a voice that is second only maybe to Daryl, and you've got a mind like a steel trap, unlike me. I was telling you uh, before the show started, I'm a very capable talk show listener. I'm not as good <laughs> as a talk show host, but, but you're great. I always love listening to you, Wayne. Well, thank you. You're yeah. not doing bad yourself already. Oh, thank you. Uh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, Wayne, thanks for, for being in here with us. And, Johnny Ray, you, you've got an article that uh, I read earlier today. You sent it to me. I, I assume to ruffle my feathers and get me all upset. So uh, let's start off with it. Uh, sure. It's uh, by Paul Rosenberg, titled, Why I Stopped Spending My Time on Politics and Why I Think You Should Too. And that's uh, from LouRockwell.com. Uh, LouRockwell.com, yes, is a news aggregator. The original source is Casey Research. Okay. Many of my friends vote. People I love and respect vote, but I've given it up. That horrifies many people, but truth be faced, it bothers them mostly because it calls their choices into question. That 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 opening you know, paragraph. This is true with a lot of things, though, right? Like, uh, you know, like for instance, vegetarians get a lot of heat, you know, <laughs> and one wonders, uh, especially ones that don't, you know, they're they're not looking for a fight. Some of them are looking for a fight, but uh, the ones that aren't looking for a fight, people want to say things about that, and I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting. What does it say? What does your decisions about you say about my decisions about me? Yeah, that the opening paragraph I was going to say resonates with me because it makes me think of other people who believe in the state, and and I want to tell them, look, you're just a sucker, you're a a sap, you're like we all have been. It, it, thank you, Wayne, um, and I will continue to insult. Well, I'll just sit here and represent the voters then. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like a coward, you give your money away every year. So if I'm so if I'm saying. If I'm saying the state is bull crap, then I'm. But you believe in it. I'm sort of insulting you. I'm calling you foolish. I'm calling you a coward. Um, well, I don't think that choosing not to vote is a uh, is is equates to whether one heroism. believes that uh, a uh, right. Well, it, whether one believes that uh, a monopoly, an organization that claims a monopoly privilege on the use of violence, and that's what a state is, uh, is the um, you know, it's the same thing, right? Like voting and believing in the state, not exactly the same thing. Why don't you go on with the article? That's very unfortunate, um, as the article continues, because I quite understand why they vote. And I don't look down on them for it. I did it plenty of times myself. 
I just wish they'd stop punishing themselves with politics and be happy instead. Politics is a type of slow-rolling torment. I don't want people I love to suffer through it. Yes, I know that my opinion seems crazy to many people, but again, it's mostly because it differs so starkly from theirs. If my opinion is right, they've been wasting their time, and almost no one likes to consider that sort of thing. We fight such possibilities reflexively. Now, uh, the wasting of your time thing, I think that's probably, uh, you know, that's extraordinarily relevant. What people don't understand is, is in many cases, you're as likely to win the lottery as you are to cast the deciding vote in one of these winner-take-all elections here in the United States, especially when you're talking about president or governor or something, or an election like that. I mean, it's just unlikely as heck that you're going to make a difference because whether let's say there's a democrat or republican running for uh you know governor of state x for if the if one gets 45,000 votes and the other gets 45,001 vote well it's the same that those 45,000 votes are the same as zero votes because you get the same result. Uh-huh. You know, if you had a runoff and it was just that close, you had the same result as not having uh, gotten a single vote, which is to say you go home, you, you at the victory party, you have to, you know, say, you know, to my esteemed opponent, I really do want to congratulate him or her on running a great campaign. Thank you. You know, and it's the same thing. I feel like a vote uh, is a waste of your time. I think it's a tiny little shred of effort, and you get what you pay for. I think if you believe in democracy, then you have to give money to candidates. Oh, you, I believe giving money to candidates is significantly more uh, uh, powerful than than voting. Yeah, yeah, you have to give money to candidates. You need to join the party. You need to start going to the state conventions, and you really need to invest yourself much greater than a vote in order to have any kind of influence. Oftentimes, I feel like people who just vote, people who don't do anything besides vote inside their, uh, the, for whatever candidate or party they're they're supporting, are unqualified to vote. Like, you don't know enough about whatever you're voting for. And I'm going to give a story, a personal story of what I've done. In, you know, Bradenton, Florida, I cast a vote. I go to the polls. I cast a vote. I'm, um, you know, I want to vote in the, the governor's race. So I decide to go and they give me this ballot full of names. Some of them are not even partisan. Now, I so I can't even pick the party that I want to go with. Uh-huh. I just have to sort of look at some names on a ballot. I'm voting for judges, uh, county commissioners and city commissioners and things like this in nonpartisan races. I'm literally picking, oh, I recognize that name from my childhood. Or from the side of the road, from right, the that, sign. Right, right, a sign, you know, like these kinds of things. There was a guy in Tennessee who had his middle name legally changed to Low Tax. <laughs> <laughs> so that he could get that on the ballot. That's pretty good. Uh, you know, you can you can have nicknames if, as long as they've, you've had that nick here in New Hampshire, as long as you've had that nickname for five years. But I don't imagine too many people called him Low Tax. Um, <laughs> So, really, I was unqualified to vote in those elections, but my vote counted just as much as, you know, the political junkie that really knew what was going on. The person that went to every single one of the county commissioner meetings, who sat in, that person who took down notes and that kind of stuff. I didn't have it. My vote could have conceivably canceled out this educated or bolstered this educated person's vote. Mm -hmm. And that is despicable of me to have voted that way. And ladies and gentlemen, I know you've done it too, and you're just as despicable as I am. So, if you like your politics, you can keep your politics. I'm not trying to take it away from you. I'm just saying that I wish good people wouldn't pour their time and energy down that particular drain. I don't think it benefits them. Now, since so many people will object, I'll explain why I think this is so. Then bad people will win. Things will get worse. This is the first argument I usually hear, to which I usually respond, it's already bad. It's getting worse. Bad people have been winning, (laughs) and it is getting worse. It's getting worse, and none of the past 10 elections have changed it. Right. I mean, you know, it's 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 demoralizing when you've been involved in the electoral process, especially when you lose, by the way. That's a mm-hmm. particularly demoralizing, especially at the national level, because it's often been said that if voting really mattered, it would be illegal. Right. 
uh, at the local level, there are times where, you know, if if you you have enough information about who you're voting for, you can make a difference in your town and you, maybe in your county. But beyond that, it, it's it's really difficult to say right. I made you a difference. A, you live in a town of what? How many people? 1,100 people. 1,100 people. When you're talking about voting for the select person or something like that, there's probably going to be 200 votes cast on either side. And so, I mean, you really, you know, you can have an effect in, in that situation. Or when state reps here in New Hampshire, they represent about 3,500 pe- people each. It's a really small district for a state rep, so they can have an effect. Your opinion on this, 855-450-3733 or Ferguson Burning, 855 855- 450 free. Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com 
Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about the effectiveness of voting, the morality of voting, Ferguson burning, or whatever's on your mind. It's Mark with you. And Wayne. And Johnny Ray. 855-450-3733. Here on Free Talk Live, we have, you know, we have organizations that we're sort of friendly with. And one of those organizations is antiwar.com. And antiwar.com is unique. There isn't a website out there like them. They really p- report on foreign policy issues from a standpoint that you're not going to hear on the Internet and pretty much any place else. And they've got a gigantic readership. But relatively recently, I think it's in the last two years, the FBI cracked down on their donor base, basically letting them know, we're watching you. We don't like anti-war and we're watching you. And that really scared a lot of people away. So... We've been trying to help because they're down to a skeleton crew with minimal pay there at antiwar.com. They're committed to keeping the website up with the best of the worst of all the bad news, but they can't do it for free, and they can't do it without you. They need your donation. Please go to antiwar.com and donate or call them today. They proudly and gladly take Bitcoin, antiwar.com, slash donate, because war is the health of the state. Johnny Ray, we're talking about uh, an article from LouRockwell.com or a post or blog mm-hmm. or what I don't know what to call it <laughs> about voting, uh, why this guy doesn't vote. He yeah. chooses not not that he's being lazy, he just chooses not to. Uh, yes, he considers it to be sort of a, a waste of time. And, and you do too. I do. It was it was a painful process for him. And he's given it up, and he has been happier for it, and he recommends it to all of his friends. The first argument that he usually hears is, if we don't vote, bad people will win, things will get worse, which he usually re- to which he usually responds, it's already bad, it's getting worse, and none of the past 10 elections have changed it. The truth is that repressive regimes steamroll right through politics. There were armies of politicians and endless elections in the Soviet republics, after all, and their constitution had some very attractive stuff in it. For example, the rights of authors, inventors, and innovators are protected by the state. The privacy of citizens and of their correspondence, telephone conversations, and telegraphic communications is protected by law. Yeah, right. Citizens of the USSR are guaranteed inviolability of the home. No one may, without lawful grounds... All right, it's always those lawful grounds. ...enter a home against the will of those residing in it. Respect for the individual and protection... Doesn't the home belong to the state in uh, some place like the Soviet Union? I mean, (laughs) doesn't that make it their home? Uh, Yeah, the home was uh, owned by the state, as far as my understanding of life in the USSR. They also had a whole network of paid snitches, too. How do you move if the uh, the home's owned by the state? I'd like another home, please, elsewhere. I don't think it's you be do. Difficult. Yeah, I don't think you, <laughs> you do. move to Siberia. That's where you move. Soviet Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, respect for the individual and protection of the rights and freedoms of citizens are the duty of all state bodies, public organizations, and officials. Obviously, politicians and political documents didn't help the people of the USSR very much. Yeah, well, it's certainly a good example to use on a uh, largely uh, American audience. It's a common refrain that we hear here on Free Talk Live about documents. We uh, talk about Lysander Spooner, and and what did he say about the U.S. Constitution? Well, that it was either it had authorized the tyranny that we see. Now, this is in the 1880s uh, in a letter in a sets of letters to going to Grover Cleveland <laughs> um, had authorized the, the tyranny that we see or been powerless to prevent it. And I would venture to say that the government has grown since then. <laughs> I could be wrong, but and certainly there are some terrible things that were going on in the 1800s and the 1880s, probably specifically. Uh, but, you know. Uh, the Constitution hasn't didn't stop them, hasn't stopped it. For what it's worth, Wayne, for what it's worth, Mark, I think the U.S. Constitution, especially um, the 
Declaration of Independence. That's not the Constitution. I know, I know. It's a rhetorical document. I know. Uh, the Poor construction there. Yep. But uh, I think both of those two documents are really noble and beautiful documents, but the result is what I'm judging them on. And the result is no good. Uh, endless warfare now, uh, welfare, just obscenely, obscene percentages of our national effort is spent in paying people not to work or paying people to enforce strange regulations, paying people to restrict the freedom of other Americans. It's just, it's a horror show. And so that's, so I consider the U.S. Constitution to be a failure, and I don't recommend that anybody lean on it or expect it to save them. I think you can look at it as uh, perhaps if you're going to, say you're going to start another constitutional republic, somehow you get the opportunity to do such a thing. You could look at it as a, uh, a, as a place to start. Consider it's the oldest governing document on the planet. Now, I'm not saying the ones that have come after it are necessarily improvements, but you can see the direction that uh, many, many times their, their governments have gone. Um, but I think that it's a place to, to start, something to look at. Uh, you know, if I had to make, if I got to rewrite the Constitution, which clearly is never going to happen, I'd have some, I'd have a few pen marks to, you know, some things that I'd work on. It makes oh, yeah. some things more clear that they couldn't be open to sort of fuzzy interpretation. Uh, and the other thing is we have to wonder how uh, how quickly the tyranny would have be, uh, come to today's tyranny if we didn't have the Constitution, because I think it probably slowed it down a bit, because they even cite the Constitution today, and there's people always pushing up against what's happening using the Constitution as a, as a weapon, in a way, to, to fight that off and to push back against it. So if we didn't have that, what would you fight back with? What would you push back with? It's true. What would you push back with? The the basic human idea, the nat natural law that we don't need rulers of any kind. Yeah, they, they, the natural law is, is eat or be eaten, and they'll use that <laughs> any way they want. But a lot of people like the Ar Articles of Confederation better because it, it, was, it, it created a more decentralized republic. When we got the Constitution, that was a national constitution, a federal constitution, and that's probably where we went wrong. Switzerland is a good example. They, they held off tyranny longer because they remained more decentralized. The um, it's interesting that Rhode Island had to be forced uh, had to be threatened with a blockade to uh, to have to be forced to sign the Constitution. Continuing on, repressive regimes, however, cannot steamroll through mid-level and lower-level operatives who fail to execute their orders. If those people fail to obey or if the people who pump their gas or fix their heating system stop complying, their rule ends and quickly. And uh, what they're talking about is, is ostracism there, right? I, I guess. I mean, you know, really when it comes down to it, uh, we, we either operate within the system or we don't. And it's interesting how, you know, sometimes laws just don't get obeyed. I mean, you know, they, go, they go decades and years without anybody obeying or enforcing them. And there's a whole pile of laws that nobody even knows exist, not even the judges or the cops. Here in New Hampshire, it's illegal to play sports or open your business on Sunday. I mean, Sunday. Uh, nobody <laughs> I mean, ever went in and repealed that. Why don't they have some sort of routine in government where every year, every two years, they go through and they just they clear out some of those old outdated laws? Because the lawyers are busy passing new laws. That's right. So uh, your opinion on this is welcome. Are we crazy with our constitution, uh, anti-constitution talk here? The number is 855-450-3733. It's free talk live. 855-450-FREE. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu-fighting products. Also 
explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at LionsofLiberty.com. Advancing the ideas of liberty daily. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency, and Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, and spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidadi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind in this live edition of Free Talk Live. We are live, well, we're live seven days a week on Free Talk Live from 7p to 10p Eastern Time. That's uh, one of the things we pride ourselves on. Even Thanksgiving will be here. Christmas will be here doing a live program for you. You can't say that about many talk shows out there. Free Talk Live, you can say that. And uh, if you're looking to get gold and silver, gold or silver, you can do it at gold.freetalklive.com. We've got uh, hand-picked gold and silver pieces over there. Great prices from Midas Resources. That's uh, they're, they're the sister company to Genesis Communications Network, our syndicate. Just head on over to silver.freetalklive.com or gold.freetalklive.com. They both take you to the same place. If you need a telephone number, it's right there at the website, but I'll give it to you here. 877-857-9938. 877-857-9938. Whether you want it as a hedge against inflation, investment, or a barter currency in, things, in case things go really badly, gold and silver from gold.freetalklive.com. Let's go to Mark. We're calling him from St. George, Utah. It's not KZNU. Mark, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? 
Hi, thanks for taking my call. I actually had a question, and um, it's just because a lot of what you guys talk about, and, you know, I, I studied a lot of things about libertarianism and everything before I even started listening to your show. Um, but And I really agree with pretty much everything that you guys talk about as far as, you know, social stuff, as far as, you know, uh, marriage equality, immigration, all those kind of things, and even also— Congratulations, your, you're a liberal. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, about about policing. And I guess my question, though, is, is what is the explanation behind, like, the economics? And I guess I say that because a big part in my mind of what the Constitution does is it kind of basically makes the government the only one that can make coinage. So, because money only matters if everybody agrees that it matters. And I know that you guys, you know, push the idea of Bitcoin and everything like that a lot, but I guess... I just can't quite make the philosophical jump as far as believing that everybody will get on board with the same economics and like that people will want to work if they can't know that their money is going to be worth something. If that okay. makes sense. Sure. I'll, I'll see if I can wade in on that one. Um, who decided that silver was going to be money? I cannot speak to that. Do you know that the ago, uh, Revolutionary War, uh, the United States Revolutionary War, was financed based on uh, Spanish pieces of eight? I did not. So um, there's a foreign currency being accepted, which are gold, of course. Um, foreign currency being accepted here um, that was not English uh, that basically financed a war in, in that case. And I think one can make the argument that there's still a state backing it, a powerful state backing that currency. But when you look at uh, the history of money, there's certainly the state is interwoven in and out. Uh, there's no doubt about it. But most of the time, kings, princes, emperors these people were at the mercy of uh you know taxation in order to fund whatever it is they wanted to do king henry wants to invade france he's got to somehow raise the money through hook or crook from uh you know other you know by doing making trade deals with uh, other kings and emperors or by taxing his people and if people, for instance, I, I like to use the example when uh, with the Iraq war, when, you know, remember when America was really gung ho, let's get those terrorists who blew up the 9-11 trade centers, right? The terrorists. Yeah. Yeah. So um, George Bush, when asked, what can we do? He said, go shopping. <laughs> right. He told you to go shopping. Now, during World War Two, we sold war bonds. Right. Like you could buy bonds to support the, the government's efforts against the, the nips or whatever it is that, uh, you know, whoever they were deciding to fight at any given time. And, uh, you know, the people were much more involved. So now with the financial system, the way it's set up. Because things have changed. It went from a U.S. dollar, uh, a dollar is a term of, uh, of a Dutch term regarding a weight of silver, to now. Um, the, 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 the oh, what, what is it called? Like the Johannes Taler or something? Yeah, it's it, like a Tala, uh, I believe is something like that. And so it's a lie. It's saying that it's an amount of silver, and it's not. Um, then, you know, 1913, the Federal Reserve comes in. Fractional Reserve banking is, uh, you know, the, the numbers are messed, messed up with in the seven, er, late 60s, early 70s. Nixon and the Brenton Wood uh, Accords decouples the dollar from uh, the uh, the gold. gold period, and so no nations can can demand gold for dollars. And at that time, the the economy gets significantly more volatile. Yes. One thing we know about fiat currencies like the dollar and like the P British pound is is that sooner or later they all return to what they're worth, which is the paper they're printed on, or the or the uh, electrons. <laughs> is the that in any way helpful? And and I would I, I, yeah no it doesn't. And, and I like to read about these things, and so since you brought these up, I you know made some kind of notes and mental notes, and I'll, I'll look into it more. So I appreciate it because I guess that's the main kind of thing that I I can't quite make – couldn't quite make the understanding. So I appreciate the explanation. Yeah, Mark, here's something for you too that might help. You know, money traditionally has been viewed as a commodity. So basically you're trading something of value, i.e. that silver piece or that gold piece for something of value. That's why a dime is smaller than a nickel, because a dime was made of silver, a nickel was made of nickel, a penny was made of copper. So if you think about it nowadays, I ask people, why is a dime smaller than, than a penny when, when it's ten, worth 10 times more? You know, it's because of the metal it was made of, and that, that was the value in it. So 
when yeah. they went to more of a um, uh, you know fiat currency, which we have all over the world now. There's no country right now that's backed by anything. Their, their currencies. Basically, it gave a small group of people uh, the ability to milk and 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 fleece millions of people without them even knowing it. Yeah, it's really important. And one thing, um, I, while you're doing your research on money, I'd encourage you to look into Andrew Jackson, the first Democrat. Mm-hmm. Um, because it used to be that labor unions were very concerned about uh, you know, the value of money. Andrew Jackson, quite the champion of labor unions. And um, they were very concerned with the value of money. And it seems like we've been decoupled from that. Americans just don't think about this stuff anymore. Because I think, all in all, the Federal Reserve has been pretty good at keeping the plates spinning or the balls in the air or whatever analogy mm-hmm. you wish to use. It's amazing that they keep on managing to pull us back from the brink with their uh, with the way that they, they you know, uh, manage the money. So I think that you've there's some really interesting stuff to learn out there. But this is what essentially turned me anti-state was the finding out about money and the big lie okay. that it is. And throughout history, no, societies that don't have a, a sound currency collapse because you've got to have something that people can rely on and work for and feel like their work is not going to be in vain because all of a sudden the money they were working for is, is, is useless because it's been printed up in, in, um, in millions and trillions. So any stable society throughout history has had sound money. Yeah, and and I really appreciate the explanation. And, and don't get me wrong, I understand that there is a huge problem with our money system and that it's, you know, always inflation. It benefits, you know, people that basically can control that, of course. Um, but I, I just didn't know all of these things. So I, I appreciate answering the question and mm-hmm. thanks for the show. Thanks so much, Mark. Appreciate the call. And Mark, you know, I remember during Ron Paul's campaign, you know, being the sly old fox he is and, and being the, the scholar that he is, you know, people would say to him, you know, uh, do you want to go back on the gold standard? Go back on the gold standard. He would say, no, keep the dollar where it is if you want, but we just want um, competing currencies because then people can decide what they want to save in. They can decide what they want to get paid in. Right. The law is that you are required to take U.S. dollars. Right. The legal tender laws. Really. Bernard von Nothaus, the creator of the Liberty Dollar. Just go ahead and search Liberty Dollar and you'll find out some amazing stories. But he was thrown in jail for counterfeiting for creating an alternative currency, a silver round, a one ounce, one ounce silver round that looked nothing like U.S. currency. Mm-hmm. It was actually made of silver, had a telephone number and a website on it. When have you seen U.S. currency with those things on it? Um, it really sort of, it's, it's fascinating, uh, the whole story behind that. It's just amazing stuff. And consider that the, the Canadians have something called the dollar, the Canadian dollar. The Australians have something called the Australian dollar. Hong Kong has the Hong Kong dollar. So the Liberty dollar, how could they say that that's uh, counterfeiting? 855-450-3733. It's Free Talk Live. Your comments, 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. 
If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's Mark with you. And Wayne. And Johnny Ray. You can give us a call at 855-450-FREE. Or, actually, you can use Skype. Um, I don't know how many radio programs let you use Skype, but we certainly try to make it easy for you. So you can use, our username is lrn.fm, and you can just go ahead and send us a request, friend request thing um, on there. And that way, I, I, I don't know why Ian has it set up particularly like that, but it's better, I'm told. <laughs> so send us a friend request, and then you can call in, and uh, you'll sound great. 855-450-FREE. Otherwise, and you, we, we have all kinds of archives for free at archives.freetalklive.com. We have archives going back a decade there, and they're all completely free for you. Archives.freetalklive.com. If you're, I don't know, working out, you get a long commute, that kind of thing, Free Talk Live just isn't producing enough content for you. Well, fine. We make it easy for you at archives.freetalklive.com. Also, if we produce too much content for you, we have another solution for that, the Digest. If you go to freetalklive.com, on the left-hand side of the page is the Digest. You can uh, go there, and it's a 75-minute show taking our 14 hours a week that we produce in um, audio content here on the show and boiling it down to 75 minutes. So there you go. You'll you'll be able to catch up on Free Talk Live if that's what you want to do. FreeTalkLive.com. Let's go to Robert calling in from North Carolina. Robert, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, thank you. I like you guys' show. It's really good. Thanks so much. Thank you, Robert. Now, are you the gentleman? And I, I, I'm going to answer your question. Talk right into your phone, Robert, please. Okay, let me pull you up here. I'm sorry. For instance, I think you're setting up a straw man argument and you're beating it to death. Okay. Um, the United States is now a corporation. The All original right. Constitution was in 1788. 
that was the Constitution for the United States, and uh-huh. that was an organic constitution for the people's government. It was amended in 1871, and they changed it to the Constitution of the United States. Is this the, what, 16th <laughs> Amendment, or? No. Before that. You're probably talking about 14th Amendment. Okay. Be referring to everyone's under the federal agencies or, or their agents of the federal government, in a sense, instead of Mitt Romney saying people or corporations, too, my friend, it's actually... Or corporations are people, too, my friend. It's actually the other way around. People are actually corporations under the way that they view us, under this corporate scheme that they have set up. And the District of Columbia was incorporated, and that's where you got your interstate commerce clauses from. Well, the interstate commerce clause was in the Constitution, right? Correct, but now it's changed to outside of the District of Columbia. You'll notice that, you know, I could go— I, Are you saying that the water. U.S. Constitution only applied to the geographic area known as the District of Columbia? No, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. Um, for instance, you remember when the right-wingers used to say, hey, Obama said he went to 57 states. You don't know what he's talking about. Well, he did. Because there's, you know, Puerto Rico, Guam, Virgin Islands. You've got the northern Marianas Islands. This is one of the reasons that he is actually, he's putting it, he's flying it in America's face. We're all being played here. And this, this guy's putting it in America's face because what he's saying is you people don't know your Bible, you don't know your Constitution, and you don't know the laws that we operate under. And so How could we? I mean, there's so many laws you couldn't read them in four lifetimes. Well, that's correct, and it's called legalese. They do it on purpose to, yeah. to fool us. But we can take our government back, and I think that's where you guys want to go. Now, I didn't call it to take a fight with you or anything like that. So, I, so they, they, uh, people can listen. People can look up Senate Report nine three dash five four nine. Nine Senate Report nine three dash five four nine, and that was a Senate report that basically told you that the executive has extra executive powers. He, there's not, you know, when people see the, the, the flag in, in District of Columbia and they see that flag flying in Washington, D.C., and they see it's a, it's a white flag with three red stars on it, they think that represents the three branches of government, and it does not, my friend. What it represents is the military power of the United States, the financial power of London, the city within a city, and because these are all cities within cities or cities within states, uh, and then the Vatican. Which is well, in Rome. I'll I'll agree with you that city states have always ruled, and that Washington D.C. essentially operates as one. But one of the things that I find difficult about this uh, this this line of thinking is the yeah. uh, is the suggestion that governments obey laws and that they write things down that are true. I mean, the Constitution, uh, you know, the rhetorical document, the Declaration of Independence, talked about equality among men and that kind of thing. But the Constitution allowed slavery. So, I mean, and this is prior to the 1870 date that you're talking about. So, I mean, you're essentially well, really was, what we're talking about is there's a group of people. Duck- well, wait a, wait a second. I want to make a point here, Robert. There's a group of people yeah. who have guns and militaries and, uh, you know, vi- people that are willing to use violence in their name and they'll get done what they want to get done. And the crap they write right. on paper is really irrelevant. OK, I got you. So now are you the same gentleman who said to the cop, hey, man, I pay your salary. But aren't you the guy who argues with people when they call in and say, well, we've been at war for 13 years? That's a, that, that You've got a real problem there. We've man, been at war for 13 lead. years. Well, what if, I don't know. You guys got these a uh, whole lot of uh, uh, people who host the show. So yep. I don't know who's who. And so I don't think anybody, I, I, I wouldn't time. think anybody on Free but, Talk but Live would say that because that. we haven't been at, uh, no, the United States, the United States and, hasn't and, been at war since people, 1942, hasn't declared war since 1942. Right. And that's what I'm trying to tell you originally is we've never ended the declaration of war. So in other words, when but Obama they hadn't said, ended declarations of war prior to that, too. Yes, they do. Every two years. You just don't know about it because Diane Sawyer hasn't told you that. You see what's happening here. Oh, that's right. I get all my news from mainstream media sources. (laughs) Unless NBC tells me, I just don't believe it. (laughs) Well, I I know that the president every few years reauthorizes the Patriot Act, and it's kind of quiet. Right, correct. Okay, every two years, here's the deal. These Republicans, these little boys up there who are professional amateurs who are trying to tell you that well, we're going to impeach Obama, and he's breaking the law. Well, why don't they name the law he's breaking? Because they can't. 
because you're not op operating under the Constitution. You're operating under the War Powers Act. You're under a, a, operating under national banking emergencies, and you don't even know that, and you're a free stainer? Come on, man. Oh, no, That's I've heard this saying. over and over again. It's not that I don't know it. I refuse to believe it. You're, there's a no, there's a difference the there's a difference between commerce. refusing to believe it and not knowing about it. You know, Mark, I saw William some. Casey, I was just, I'm listen, sorry. William Casey, the head of the CIA in 1981, stated okay. that his job will be complete when the Americans think the opposite of everything is going on. And this is what's happening: is we're being played. Why do you think the Republicans inverted the stars on their symbol on the Republican thing? Because no one would notice, and they're trying to show you something, and you guys don't even notice. And I bet you some of your buddies walk around with those little monster shirts that is basically three sixes, and they it says it's it's it, uh, it's a it's a they, which is a number six. Anybody can look all this up. I'm telling them you can call me any name when you get. When they get off the phone, that's fine. I don't give a crap. No, no, I've seen the monster. I've seen the whole guy. monster and, of the and, energy and drink is, is a... Is big dummies to walk around with the three sixes, and I don't even care about that. And we know it's embedded in UPC symbols. And even if that's true, if, you, if, you, if you, there's nothing you can do about it... If I was a crazy Satanist world ruler, I wouldn't put a bunch of symbols around for smart guys like you to figure it out. <laughs> I would just tell... I'd just say, no... <laughs> Nope, I'm not putting the symbols out there. I'm keeping all the symbols myself. It, I wouldn't put a big no, mural no. in uh, the Denver National Airport yeah. revealing my whole scheme. I wouldn't lay out a city based on okay. the pentagram. The, I, 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 you, the there would be no clues for you to, to, to talk about and put, a, put your story together. To do this. You don't, so, so you know what? In order for you to see the light, you must first look into the dark, and you haven't done that because you're a good little boy. Well, let me tell you something. What are you talking about? Here's what, here's what fear is. Fear is nothing more than false evidence appearing real to you guys. Here's the deal. What were the spelling words on the day of 9-11 is when Bush was down there in an announced, in an announced uh, classroom with little kids, and we got to protect them, with an airport four miles away. What were those spelling words? Do you know what they were? That Why day? in the world would I care? What gonna do. It was kite, steel, plane, must, hit. Why were those words used? You win. That's it. Announced. George Bush it blew up 9/11 World Trade Center, and that. and they revealed it in a third, in a second grade classroom in Sarasota, Florida. No, Mark, Mark. You know what he's. I think what he's trying to say is. What, what, I, what I think he's trying to say is is that. Uh, you want the little boy bill? No, no. All right, I'm a child. <laughs> He totally conflated what I said. <laughs> no, I was I, look. I was there, man. Like I, I was blocked by the traffic. I didn't have a lot of time to go looking at what was going on on the chalkboard. Mm. Apparently, you've had a lot of time to pour over everything on the internet and finally put all the pieces together for us all. And that's the problem. No, you you're, a problem I, with that? I'm you telling you, you that somebody it. smart enough to rule the world, it. you're not going to be able to figure out their little code words. They're not going to give you codes. <laughs> Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. You can tell me how I am wrong on this and correct my assertions. We talk live. I put the sixes inside the can. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. <laughs> This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. 
You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, November 24th, 2014. Gold closed Friday at $1,201, up $8. Silver closed at $16.45, up $0.22. And Bitcoin is trading around $368.15. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. They've created a menu of food that's so good, so easy to make, you'll find yourself eating it every day even though it has a shelf life of up to 25 years. eFoods Direct is offering 10% off to all Liberty Beat listeners. Just go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for your savings today. In the news, on Saturday, former CIA analyst Ray McGovern spoke in New York City as part of an event calling attention to the classified 28 pages of the Senate's report on 9-11. The outspoken critic of the federal government gave a talk titled The Surveillance Pseudostate, released the 28 pages. McGovern was joined by former U.S. Attorney General Ramsey Clark and Terry Strada, a 9-11 family member. If House Resolution 428 passed, it would force the release of the classified 28 pages of the larger Senate report. The American Civil Liberties Union has filed a Freedom of Information Act request regarding the recently exposed U.S. Marshal Service program that uses aircraft to gather cell phone data. The Wall Street Journal reports that the Marshal Service was using Cessna planes equipped with cell site simulators, sometimes known as stingrays, at at least five airports across the nation. The so-called dirt boxes are supposed to be used for criminal investigations, but the ACLU says they can collect data from tens of thousands of people on each flight. The Obama administration says it's been reporting too high a figure for health law signups because of accounting mistakes. It's another embarrassment after video surfaced recently of a former advisor suggesting that deception was used to pass President Barack Obama's signature law. Healthcare law opponents say it's no innocent mistake. They say the numbers were padded. The Liberty Beat is made possible by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. And support also comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, November 24th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. And like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. Judge William A. Fletcher with the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has said the ATF's use of reverse stings is a waste of resources and encourages people to commit crimes they otherwise wouldn't commit. Judge Fletcher made the comments as part of an ongoing battle between federal prosecutors and lawyers for two men accused of drug conspiracy and robbery conspiracy charges. The charges were recently dropped after a district judge ruled the government engaged in outrageous misconduct. After a fourth straight night of low-level protests in Ferguson, Missouri, anxious residents still did not know yesterday when a grand jury would return a decision on whether to charge a white policeman who shot an unarmed black teen to death this summer. The Wall Street Journal, citing an unidentified St. Louis County official, reports the 12-member grand jury adjourned and was to resume meeting behind closed doors today. Reuters could not confirm that report. Engineers with the University of Washington have tested a contact lens that can receive information through a heads-up display. The contact lens is flexible and imprinted with electronic circuit and lights and could potentially provide new methods of communication and surfing the Internet. The researchers tested the lenses on rabbits for up to 20 minutes and reported no adverse effects. 
The Liberty Bee is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? Well, the Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To inquire further, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, November 24th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Everyone needs to get a justice shed. So you have a place to throw that little juvenile delinquent you caught loitering out on the street corner. This is not rocket science, people. I just call up my neighbors, Frank and Terry. We get out there with baseball bats, fishing nets, and we knock that suspect out. And we toss him in our justice shed. We just start dealing out some shovel beatings. That's democracy, people. That's the biggest benefit of the justice shed, people. You are in charge. Our justice shed was all filled up, so we created this justice cage. It's just as good. These guys, I think we caught them shoplifting, and this is my daughter's boyfriend. Uh, Look, if you don't have a yard big enough to place a justice shed in, go out and get yourself a justice barrel. I don't care. The important thing is to take control of your safety by any means necessary. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. You can call in, talk about what's on your mind here on the this live edition of Free Talk Live with Mark. And Wayne. And Johnny Ray. Wayne is sitting in, visiting here, a longtime co-host from way back. Hello. Thanks for coming uh, and, and sitting with us, Wayne. No problem. Uh, Mark, last segment we were talking to Robert. Who was, yes, last hour. Who, last hour we were talking to Robert, and he said that you have to... He was... What was he telling us about? Because I'm... I'm uneducated with all this stuff, but I think you know a lot more about it than I do. I think Wayne could probably hang with it, too. And uh, there there are all kinds of I, I hesitate to use the term conspiracy theories because mm-hmm. I'm a conspiracy theorist. Everybody's a conspiracy theorist. Mm-hmm. Right. I was listening to Rush Limbaugh last week prattle on about what he knew what the Democratic National Convention was going to do. And he he knows those liberals like every inch of his glorious naked body. Right. Like <laughs> he doesn't know because he hasn't heard. So therefore, what he's talking about is a conspiracy theory. So I, I don't like the term conspiracy theory, but I don't really have any anything better to sort of describe it. So I'm going to go ahead and call it a conspiracy theory um, is, you know, these ideas that, uh, you know, the United States was incorporated back in the 1870s. And I think there's some evidence for this. Yeah, uh, There's evidence that there was an amendment that passed that never got put on the books back in the 1830s or something where lawyers couldn't be politicians. There's all kinds of evidence for stuff. But I think what it shows ultimately is, is that the people in power have the power and that the laws they write down are really inconsequential. But many people, when they talk about this particular type of conspiracy theory, believe that they can, uh, you know, somehow unravel it using their laws. And I don't believe you can. I don't believe you can look for their symbols to prove this, that, or the other thing. You know, maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. I don't know the answer. Um, If it is true, then okay. What difference does it make? If the you know Washington D.C., London, and v- the Vatican rule the planet. Okay, now what? So the news that we hear doesn't belies what the truth is. What a surprise! Mm-hmm. To me, here's my here's my conspiracy theory. There are people in power. Those people in power believe they own you, body and soul. Mm-hmm. They will do what they want with you, your body, your money, your children. And there's not much you can do about it except attempt to leave and go to the, a different tax farm, a different country, where they <laughs> will believe the same things about you. Mm-hmm. Might not be as bad, but it it'll might be the not. same thing. You have to find the things that are right for you. The reason I picked up and moved to the Free State Project for, at freestateproject.org, and there are lots of people who believe the, the things that Mark, who just called in, uh, believe uh, that are here at the Free State Project, no doubt about it. Um, 
you know, the reason I picked up and moved is because I fe- believe there's powers and power in numbers and that you actually can use the voting system to some extent to have some kind of luck at the local level. At the local level, uh, not at the state level, I could care less who gets uh, voted into the state, uh, to government, to federal office in New Hampshire. Completely inconsequential to me. I'm a big fan of the Free State Project because it's not about, really, I don't think it's it's much at all about changing your politicians, but it's about changing your neighbors. Now, that much is true, too. And changing your consciousness, too. But what what stood out to me about Robert's comment was he it said it was Robert. It was okay. Mark before him. All right, my mistake. Robert said that you must look into, you must stare into the blackness. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a, it. Was deep, right? Yeah. It immediately suggested the Nietzsche quote: um, "Beware, if thou gaze long into an abyss, the abyss will also gaze into thee." I warn you, Robert. He who fights with monsters should be careful, lest he thereby become a monster. Well, there you go. More deep stuff. Hmm. You were, we were actually, interestingly, talking about voting. And uh, I don't advocate for voting really on a national level because the mathematics are against you. You can go ahead and do it. I think if you've got a talk show that it might be worth advocating for one politician over another because you talk to you know, a bunch of people, I think that you know, uh, talk show hosts can have a, a small effect in that uh, realm. But ultimately, uh, you know, it's really about who gets the vote out uh, when it comes to these national level politicians. But on a local level, when people just don't know who they're voting for in many cases, they have no idea who they're voting for, that you can really, you know, you can you can make a change. And if you can get out, you can knock on some doors, you can meet some people, you can really make a difference, especially in New Hampshire where we have 400 legislators. Hold on a second. 400 legislators. It's the largest legislative body of any state, the third largest in the English-speaking world, and the fourth largest on the planet. So New Hampshire, this tiny little state of 1.3 million people or whatever it is, has the largest legislative body of any state. And that means that there are a lot of legislators, and you can ha- you can actually be one if that's what you want to do. They don't have offices. They don't have secretaries. They've got, when you call them, you call them on their cell phone. That's how much contact you have with your legislator here in New Hampshire. And they'll usually live right down the street. Oftentimes. I'm going to repeat uh, the, the last paragraph that I read from the article by Paul Rosenberg. Repressive regimes cannot steamroll through mid-level and lower-level operatives who fail to execute their orders. I'm repeating the sentence because it confused me a little bit. Uh, I thought that the author was talking about people like us and what we should do, and I'm certainly not a mid- or low-level operative of government, but maybe he's describing it more in the Soviet sense where everybody is an operative of the government of some kind, or maybe he's uh, what he's saying is is that um, it, it is the low level and mid level operatives that empower the state if they chose not to act. So uh, you those know. are also people I'd like to point out that you never vote for, right? And they are they are permanent. They're mm-hmm. always there, and you don't know who they are. They don't know who you are. Oftentimes, you'll have we'll have police officers call the show, and uh, Ian, uh, my our main co-host, our main host, loves to talk about the war on drugs. Right, it's his favorite thing, and he'll say, you know, you're enforcing marijuana laws to these officers, and they'll say, I have to, it's my job. But and it's not if that one officer chose not to enforce marijuana laws; it's if a force of officers chose not to enforce marijuana laws. That would have a real change and a real effect, but. It's it's a market failure, essentially, because you can't get one to break the ranks because they'll lose their job How and the sweet, you. sweet benefits. How well, they can look the other way. Is such cer- thing as a market failure. <laughs> yeah, they can, they can look the other way in certain situations. They certainly do. You know, if you uh, in, in certain circumstances, if maybe they identify with a, a kid who's been caught with some marijuana, they'll be like, I don't want to make it so this kid can't get college loans, which I, as I understand, a drug ch- offense will make it so you can't get college loans. Um, I don't know. I'm not getting very many college loans these days. <laughs> But that might be a blessing in disguise. <laughs> they, those kids get huge loans out there. Uh, but they, you know, maybe they'll they'll just all right. You know, I'm throwing your weed away. Get out of here. That kind of thing. Go and, and take it home and smoke it. That's uh, you never know. Instances like that can change people's lives, but sometimes they don't. Yeah. 
it's really difficult to know when you're in the, uh, the, the, the correctional capacity whether exactly what sentence is going to be effective for what person and what crime. It's impossible to tell, I think. We have certainly flawed humans make, you know, working within flawed systems. Uh, I would say that any of these these kind of good effects that can come from from being punished by the state, that's all coincidental to what their real job is, which is making which is raising money, you know, uh, generating revenue, if you will, taking money from the people and lining their pockets with it and protecting the the power elite that are there now. They're. They're not. They're not really in the rehabilitation game. You may rehabilitate yourself, and they'll take credit for it. But that's Indeed. not what they're there for. Uh, back to the article. In real life, a repressive regime isn't restricted by politics. It's restrained. Pardon me. Restrained by disobedience. In the end, rulers can only go as far as the obedience of their subjects. If they go too far, if their subjects stop obeying, they're done. There's. I'm I'm inserting editorially here. There's a lot more of us than there are of them. Absolutely, this is the uh, this is the knife's edge that they walk. The intention is is that they got to find the parade, get out in front of it, and look like they started the parade. Power always corrupts, and it will always expand to the limit of its subjects' obedience. Mm. Do you well think said. that the disobedient are in fact? The greatest heroes? There's a lot of disobedience going on in, in Ferguson right now. I, I have a difficult time calling them heroes. 855-450-3733, Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger that's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent what the free state project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is it's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas there's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty there's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it but here in new hampshire people are doing it 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. It's Mark with you. And Wayne. And Johnny Ray. 855 450 free. If you've got Bitcoin and you're in the market for a car, New Age Auto Sales has late model used cars that have been cared for from their rental fleet. And since New Age Auto Sales is selling their own well maintained cars, you don't have to pay for the auction fees and the transport costs that go into other used vehicles. Their cars are in great condition. They're priced to move. They can ship anywhere in the world. So go to NewAgeAutoSales.com and see what they have. They're looking to be the Bitcoin auto dealer. But obviously, if you see something there you like and you don't have enough Bitcoin to cover the whole thing, they can work something out for you in U.S. dollars, too. There's no doubt about it. But with Bitcoin, your money never needs to be exchanged into dollars. It's NewAgeAutoSales.com for late model, well-maintained cars shipped anywhere in the world for Bitcoin. Head on over to their website or give them a call and buy a car from the first Bitcoin auto dealership, NewAgeAutoSales.com. Great idea. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for them. I, th- I hope that they can pull it off because, uh, you know, Bitcoin's really new on the market. Is somebody going to buy cars uh, and have them shipped? I hope so. I think it's a really great idea. And, you know, I, I've taken a look over there and they do have a great selection. So NewAgeAutoSales.com. Let's go to Rick in Florida. Rick, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, good evening, Mark. Good to talk to you. The voice of reason on Free Talk Live most of the time. <laughs> well, well, I do my best. Uh, you know, I was uh, I think it was Johnny Ray talk, reading the article. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, you know, it really all starts at the local level. I deal with the local building departments here in your old stopping grounds up, up in Sarasota and here in Charlotte County quite often. And they will literally try to extort as much money out of our, out of us as possible. Uh, <laughs> I when, don't doubt it for a second. And and, uh, and there's really no rhyme or reason to it. And what boggles my mind when I'm in, you'll see the homeowners coming in and just paying and paying and paying and asking permission for everything. They, the worst thing to do is call a building department or any local jurisdiction and say, "Do I need a permit for?" Yes, that's exactly it, because I know what the answer is. The answer is, yes, you need to pay us if you're going to do this thing or that thing on your property. Absolutely. There are places, I don't know if this is true, Rick, but I heard um, out on Longboat Key, you needed a permit to change the carpet inside your house. In Cape Coral, they have a garage sale permit. There you go. It's insanity. Right. You You have to pay for the permit whether you make money or not. (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's, it's pure craziness. But my point here is, is it's important, and I tell my kids this. I've been listening to you guys a long, long time, and I consider myself the Ian of the South. But uh, the just teaching your kids to, to try to not participate in their system as much as humanly possible. Uh, don't ask for the permission. Don't give them the money. Please don't pay the court fees. And and it just boggles my mind. Just everyone just writes the checks, pays the money. I got a ticket. I owe 180 bucks. It's not. So I might go fight this. 
It's what, just I have to pay it. What about these uh, these uh, these permits and that sort of thing? How do you? Because I mean, one of the ways that they'll get you is I bought a house in Florida and it had a. Uh, Florida room or whatever they call it, basically an enclosed uh, lanai. But the person who had added it on had never gotten it as, uh, you know, had never called it a room, had never gotten the permits for it. So they had to sell the house as a two-bedroom, two-bath or something like that. And, um, you know, I couldn't claim this other room when I was listing it. Because it wasn't on the permits. but. Well, it's just what's on the county tax rolls, I would assume, yeah. how that would work out. But uh, but it happens all the time if you go to sell a house and uh, somehow the county finds out about something or yep. if there's a permit that a contractor never had final four years ago, they'll charge you hundreds of dollars to reopen the permit and and, and just rubber stamp it at the office. Oh, and yes. Just to, to milk and bilk, extort literally as much money as humanly possible. And when people start looking at these fees and costs as what they truly are, which is pure theft, because you get no value. When an, when an inspector comes out to a house to look at what I do, which is pool heating and heat pumps and stuff like that, they don't know. A guy asked me one time, do you have your signs up? And it was a solar electricity system could kill you. Do you have your signs up? Okay, looks good to me. There's no value for these for the service that you pay hundreds of dollars for at these building departments. Right. It's really just a uh, you, it, it's a stamp um, that allows you to... I guess it avoids a lawsuit in some way or another because the government said it's okay. Okay, we'll let you live. <laughs> it's protection but money. But if your house burns yeah. down, if you get it, if your if you get your electric panel replaced by an electrician, the inspector says it's fine, and your house burns down, can you go back to the city inspector? No. No. You have no recourse against these people. They have no. Uh, the, the training is, is appalling. And most of the time, we know 10 times more than the inspectors know. And I, I've been to some of these meetings, and the worst thing in the world is that these building inspectors get together and have a meeting. <laughs> oh, my God. They just make shit. They make stuff up. And, uh, but anyway, it, uh, that was my two cents on disobedience from the, from the lower tiers, which is right where we, were, where we are. And uh, by just not – doing as much as you can to not ask permission and just do it and worry about it later. It's not going to cost you any more. Well, so far I've generally had uh, the same attitude in my life. Now I live in a town where there are very few permits for anything. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I generally operated the way that you're talking about operating when I lived down there where you are, and nothing bad happened about it. You know, I'd redo my house, and I didn't ask them for any pieces of paper, and I just figured, I, I don't think you need it if you're a, you know, if you're a, a single individual doing it, you don't have to worry about it. I was at a house today, and the guy begged me not to get a permit because half of his outbuildings, he had six outbuildings, and never pulled a permit on any of them and didn't want the county, you know, nosing around his property. And what do you do in a situation that. like that? I called my boss, and I'm, and we are going to accommodate the customers. Well, that's what you got to do. Rick, thanks so much yeah, for the call. We'll, yeah, good talking to you, Mark. Appreciate it. 855-450 free. You know, it's it, it, the government will. He's really right about this. The government will sell you a permit for anything that you want to do. If you call them up and say, hey, do I need a permit for this? What are the chances of them saying, no, it's okay, go ahead? I just, it's not something I've experienced too often. I wonder what it's like in towns. Uh, Wayne, you live in a town where there's no permits necessary to build at all. I wonder what it's like when they call town hall and ask them there. <laughs> I just wonder, you know, have they have they just send somebody out to get a check from you? Sure, I'll be over for a check. Give me a second. Well, there's no zoning in the town, but uh, they there's still permits you can pull. Okay. So you can still get a permit for certain things, but outbuildings for like horse sheds, horse run-ins, you know, we don't get a permit. There's no floor. It's it's not really a building, per se. It's a, it's a like a little shed with no with one side missing, you know. Right. So I'm not gonna get a pull permit for that, but got you it. got you got to be careful because they can give you a hard time if you put up something and you don't pull a permit, and then somebody scrutinizes you, you can have problems. Indeed, there's always the nosy neighbor. 855-450-3733. Love to hear your stories about running into the zoning and planning people. 
855-450 free free talk live 855-450-3733 Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. For all our loyal listeners, it's time for another giveaway. Over the next 30 days, our friends at SupernaturalSilver.com are giving away six 16-ounce Supernatural Silver liquid valued at nearly $100 per bottle or their skin and body gel priced at $49.98. All you have to do is enter and win at GCNlive.com. Hurry, contest ends December 5th. GCN can give you and your loved ones a fighting chance with the Supernatural Silver giveaway at GCNlive.com. Are you making sense to the boomer mindset? I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com. 80 million baby boomers comprise 25% of the population and control most of the USA's wealth. As aging parents pass on, they'll control more. Boomers are 46 to 65 years old and regard themselves as midlife. They identify as neither young nor old. They're post minivan and pre-retirement and they don't like being called boomers. They think me. Many of the purchases boomer couples make are individual purposes. They've been experimenters all their lives. If you want their attention, tell stories and keep it simple. If something seems complicated, boomers can dismiss it as, I don't need this. And if you're looking for work, you may be applying to a boomer, so relate accordingly. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. Excuse hey, me. hey, 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 hey. Who do you think excuse you are? Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It's Mark with you. And Wayne. And Johnny Ray. If you value your online privacy, you need ProXPN. ProXPN is a global virtual private network. It allows all of your online data to be encrypted. Your internet service provider is likely saving your surfing history and will turn it over to anybody who asks or anybody who flashes some kind of 
credentials of some sort. How does that make you feel? Well, uh, without ProXPN, everything you do online is available to anybody who asks. Um, just, But if you want to fix that, you just go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Yes, they can handle uh, Windows, Mac, iOS, even Linux. So ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use promo code FTL50, and you'll save 50% off the annual account. So that's like 5 bucks a month. The uh, FTL50 will get you a savings for the lifetime of the account, no matter which premium account you go with. So that means that not just the first year is discounted, but every year is discounted on, with ProXPN. Or, but you could use uh, coupon code FTLBTC and pay with Bitcoin and you'll get 62% off of the annual account. So it's even bigger savings. With the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers all around the world to access, the ability to privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites. And this is important. ProXPN doesn't keep any of your records of your online uh, habits. You'll get all of what all of that with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use promo code FTL50 or FTLBTC and get a great discount on privacy that's priceless. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Johnny, we've been trying to get through this article that's telling us the evils of voting. Yes. The evils of participating in politics. In the end, rulers can only go so far as the obedience of their subjects. If they go too far, if their subjects stop obeying, they're done. Power always corrupts, and it will always expand to the limits of its subject's obedience. Yeah, I think that's pretty much true. Mm -hmm. I'm not alone in saying this. You understand. Frederick Douglass said the same thing long before I did. Colon. Find out just what people will submit to. Is this your uh, Frederick Douglass? This uh, is my black orator uh, voice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and you have found out. The exact amount of injustice and wrong which will be imposed upon them. The limits of tyrants are prescribed by the endurance of those whom they oppress. I almost had trouble uh, following the quote just because I, I couldn't get past the accent. <laughs> <laughs> Find out just what people will submit to, and you have found out the exact amount of injustice and wrong which will be imposed upon them. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, now I get it. Absolutely. The limits of tyrants are prescribed by the endurance of those whom they oppress. The worst problem with politics is that it increases the obedience of the populace. The blues always blame the reds. The reds forever blame the blues, and everyone keeps right on obeying. After all, their team may win the next election, and then things might finally go their way. If so I not, just be obey for a little while, then we'll, I won't have to obey in the future. I'm going to fulfill my obligations to Obamacare, even though I don't believe in it, because the Republicans are in now, and maybe they'll, maybe they'll just unwind it. <laughs> mm -hmm. As though George Bush didn't reside over the, the, uh, the largest expansion of the federal government into uh, the medical sphere up to that point. That's right. He set the table for it, and Romney pretty much set up the blueprint for Obamacare with Romney Care in Massachusetts before Obamacare was ever passed. Yeah, this is where I'm going to start sounding like a conspiracy theorist. Because I, I wonder whether this is just, you know, it's just smoke and mirrors. You know, one side, red side, blue side, you watch, watch the birdie. It's like the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. I, I, I feel for, for every voter, and I think they're, they're all a little bit moronic for voting, but especially the Republican voter, because the Republican is ostensibly for small government, and government is not about small government. Government just grows, and the Republicans have been, you know, They've been peeing in your face, Republican voters, for years and years. They're growing the size of government. So so I think it's it's especially I think you you Republican conservative voters are especially ridiculous. Well, you know, on that point you're I right, think I Johnny. am this voter you're talking about. Go but, ahead. but the Democrats get duped when it comes to peace, when it comes to the environment. So they're they're both yeah. being duped in well, different everything ways. Everything that they pr they promise, uh, right? I mean, you know, yeah. essentially, um, everything that's uh, that's promised to the Democrat voter is what the Democratic Party is lying about. But Johnny Ray, I mean, I voted in this uh, most recent election. I sent in my ballot, and you know, several days ahead, I voted, um, you know, for Republicans to some extent. I wrote in some people. I uh, I'm sure there's a Democrat somewhere on the ballot that I voted for. I try to I try to be as fair with the with the uh, tyrants as I can be. But meh, I don't really expect it to change anything. Uh huh. So I just vote. 
Right. And I gave them a stamp. What's that? 50 cents? They got 50 cents out of me that I wouldn't that I would probably have lost in the couch anyway. Isn't it amazing though how every year, every decade, politicians are masters at convincing the public they need just a little more power so they can make things better. And they and, and they keep grabbing more and more and more power. Oh, sure. Uh, and convincing people that we need to centralize this. The federal government needs to do it because the states aren't going to do the right thing. And these people over there are too stupid to do the right thing. So we have to force them to do it. And before you know it, of course, you have this big, huge, monolithic central state when really the answer to our problems is decentralization, um, operating more at the local level and getting rid of th- that big, huge uh, thing at, at, in Washington, D.C., that titular entity there that that uh that has the all-seeing oz in it <laughs> the um I, I i you know sometimes local government can be as tyrannical as uh as federal government but i think you have just a slightly more effect on them yeah not a not a whole bunch more but maybe slightly more well the ultimate form of, of decentralization obviously is anarcho-capitalism well, it's the ability to rule yourself, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I think anarcho-capitalism is marriage about the two worst, uh, most vilified words in the English language. It's like pedo-rapist. <laughs> Johnny Ray? No matter whom you vote for, the government gets elected. When people think of the U.S. government, they usually think of about 600 people in Washington, D.C. The actual most government, of them criminals. <laughs> the, the actual government, however is composed of millions of employees, many of whom are almost impossible to fire. To make it worse... Yes, this is really a problem, is, you know, (laughs) the politicians can pass whatever laws they want if the bureaucrats don't feel like enforcing them too bad. And look at this over 20,000 pages of regulations even after Obamacare was passed, and that was over 2,000 pages, just the law itself. They give the bureaucrats basically lawmaking power, these unelected bureaucrats lawmaking power, by saying, hey, you know, you, you write the rules. To make it worse, oceans of money are moving through this operation on a daily basis. Oh, yeah. This arrangement fosters the abuse of power, Uh and it always will. Yes. It's a structural issue, not, quote, a few bad apples. What about, so um, I made the claim earlier, and I'm going to stick by it, that uh, the world has always been ruled by city-states. They talk about the modern nation state, but I would contend that there is no modern nation state, that in fact there are city states with rules um, areas of influence. so that um, we don't we aren't ruled by the US government. We're ruled by Washington, DC. And sure, you can elect your representative that, that goes there, but it's it's got its own momentum, its own corporate uh, attitude, its own corpus, corporate atmosphere. Mm. So, sure, sure, the parties decide who you get to vote for. Yeah, and indeed, they do. And a, lo- <laughs> and a lot of honest people who go to Washington with the best intentions come out shaking their heads because they they realize just what a culture of dysfunction exists in Washington D.C. Uh, the people that are still there understand it. Uh, it's you know they're they're as frustrated as anybody. The the ones that still have stars in their eyes with the hope of making a better world, uh, you know they haven't yet quite been broken. I, uh, I you know it, it it's got to be very very tough on them. Politics keeps us believing that things can improve anyway once we defeat that horrible enemy party, of course. But regardless of our hopes, we always end up with something that might be called practical rulership. In other words, not much changes, even when the televised faces do. Yeah, well, I mean, you can kind of look at the uh, the way the Senate's set up. You've got to, to get any law through, you have to get it through um, the 60-40 vote thing that they've got there on there. It's nearly impossible if it's partisanship um, that, that's on the line. So it just means that the, two, the, thing, well, the one thing that both parties can agree on is more government. And that's what you get. 855-450 free. The government's designed to make more government. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy Correspondence Courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Free Talk Live. Pushing woman to the ground with a camera in her hand, you know, yeah. I think a real man wouldn't do that. And you got to be on roids or something to get into that state of well, mind. Well, Wayne hit it on the head. If they're not on steroids, and a number of them, some of them are, most of them probably aren't. They're not on steroids, maybe, but they're definitely high on adrenaline. Former drug task force officer, when he started with the police, you know, he would get that adrenaline rush from writing a ticket. And then, of course, he acclimated himself to it, and then he needed something else. He needed to escalate. He needed to have something else. So it, be, it, it, it got so extreme that he would leave people uncuffed. Like he'd bust a Coke dealer or something like that, mm-hmm. and then just leave them uncuffed on the hopes that they would get up and try to run. Uh, so he kicks some butt. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. And call in and talk about whatever's on your mind. This live edition of Free Talk Live, it's Mark with you. And Wayne. And now, now, Wayne, you're doing it wrong. Because you're the second guy, I'm the third guy. So you need to just say, Wayne, or uh, you could, if you want to be clever, you could say, comma, Wayne. And then I say, and... Johnny Ray. I see. <laughs> see so I used to do that to you all the time, Mark. Then I stopped. I stopped saying and Johnny Ray because then you would you said and Mark and it sounded silly. You're making me look like a too, fool. Too many right? ands, right? <laughs> yeah. It's not grammatically correct. And my mother was an English teacher. I should know better. You can go to listen.freetalklive.com and listen to Free Talk Live and see all the different ways that you can listen to Free Talk Live. Not only are we on 
more than 150 great radio stations around the country and free to air satellite and live streams on the internet. Uh, but we've, there's a webcam at cam.freetalklive.com. I love the listen lines where you can call into a telephone number and listen to Free Talk Live. Uh, so if your data plan isn't working on your phone or just, uh, you know, it's using up too much bandwidth or whatever it is, you just call this telephone number and you can listen right there. It's listen.freetalklive.com for all of those options. Johnny Ray, you're reading an article from lourockwell.com regarding, uh, you know, voting the uh, the effectiveness, efficacy, and yeah, it's morality. An, it's an article by Paul Rosenberg from Casey Research, and okay. what he's saying now is that not only is politics a drain on our lives, but it makes people more likely to robotically obey, and that is truly dangerous. Yes. And he goes on to explain just how that happens. But didn't people robotically obey, obey back in the times of autocrats and monarchs and things like that? I mean, you know, the gods, God said the king was the king, and that's it. I mean, I don't know. I wasn't living at that time, but I just suspect. No, I don't know either, but the, the democracy, the, the point is to make us feel like we are the government. And I think if we truly do feel that way, then we're going to be more likely to obey than if we feel like we're being ruled by aristocrats. I think that's the biggest, most dangerous lie that the Constitution gives us. Is the, greatest the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing you that he didn't exist. <laughs> is saying that, well, we are the government. It's we the people. Says so right here on the document. Well, it's not we the people. If it was, then you'd be able to do something, and you haven't been able to do anything to the government yet. Not once. I remember there was a time in my life I had never voted for a winning candidate. Um, you know, that, that has changed, but it, it doesn't, I just still don't feel like I have any real effect. I, I, I don't think I've ever voted for a winning candidate. And, well, more on that later. Embedded in the practice of politics is a superstition, which is this. If we complain enough and in the right ways, we'll get what we want without having to take any risks at all. In other words, we want to believe that politics provides us an easy way out, that our complaints invoke magic. But if we want things to be different, we must act to make them different. Politics shuts that down by making people think that talking is magic and passivity is a virtue. Is writing magic? Because that's what he's doing here. Um, you know, I wonder to myself, I can vote and talk and write and do all the things that Mr. Rosenberg probably believes that one should do at this point. I, I assume he's not the sort that believes that I should, uh, you know, sneak a gun in and start shooting every politician I could find. Uh, there are those people that exist. But the do something, I think, is always an interesting proscription. Exactly what is this something of which you speak? I don't know what it is. Um, the person who created Bitcoin, the, the, the person who, or person or persons who is Satoshi Nakamoto, did something amazing. Mm -hmm. Like Bitcoin's amazing and will probably uh, severely limit the power of the state because it limits its ability to create money. But, uh, you know, what's the average person going to do? And I don't think much. And if on a Tuesday you've got some time and some gas to burn, and you decide to go down to town hall and meet a few people that, uh, you know, a few of your neighbors at the uh, the voting booth, I don't feel like you have set back that, uh, you know, whatever it is that you might do. I agree. I agree. I think the reason I'm opposed to voting is I, I think it encourages people to think that they're doing more than they really are. Yeah, I think that well, I think that for me, the, the the biggest problem with voting is is how much it can take up your time. It takes up real estate in your brain. Mm -hmm. So, oh, which one of these uh, dirty politicians am I going to vote for? And you can rack your mind over it. You spend your time in the shower when you could be thinking about, I don't know, life, you, the universe, and everything, the number 42, whatever it is that you want to think about in the shower. Um, and you're thinking about filthy, stealing, lying politicians. And... <laughs> You know, I mean, but you know, Mark, like, that's what you can't get back. But you know, Mark, if I were one of these masters of the universe elite, whatever you want to call them, I think voting is the perfect uh, ruse. It's the perfect pressure relief valve in a sense because people get all ticked off at the at the current regime, 
And they, they want to vote the bums out. They want to vote the bums out, exactly. So they think they're doing and something. And that's what happened this time. Uh, we actually had only 90% of uh, incumbents remain. Exactly. So it, it, it's it, instead of it with a dictatorship, you know, in the in the old days, or even the king, they would go and kill the king, or and and put some other king in there. Now, now you just vote these people out, and then a new bunch of bums come in, and they and after a few years they tick you off, and then you vote those bums out, and it's a never ending procession of crooks that steal continually. That's what they do. That's what they do. So. We have millions of decent and capable people who are more than able to solve their own problems, but who never consider acting on their own because they're intimidated and because they think that they can get what they want without risk by talking correctly. Politics has given them an attractive lie to believe in. Change your world, no pain, no strain, no risk. Not only is this promise a rank superstition, but it also sidetracks people from actually changing the world. Why spend your blood, sweat, and tears when mere complaining will work the same or better? Yeah, that's the one right we still have in the United States. You can still complain. As long as you do it in a certain area with <laughs> right. it's fenced in. Well, if you want to go outside and complain, you're going to have to be in a free speech zone. But you can just complain. I can't tell you how many times uh, you know people have called into this program and said, you know, we've soldiers have fought and died for your right, for your people to say what you're saying. And I admit that the one thing that that we don't have the, uh, the, the that we haven't lost is the right to complain. If if uh, rights ever existed in, more fully in the past, I'm not sure about that. But I would take umbrage with the statement that soldiers fought and died for my freedoms. I That's can't. What they were told. Yeah, I I I think that they probably joined for that reason but i think the in fact what they did was the whims of politicians now certainly i'll make that claim in the last six decades that that's the case um but it's the whims of politicians their plans gone awry whatever they might be no, no soldiers died for my freedom not in the last six decades i i more than that i hesitate the to, to have the world war ii conversation because i think it gets mired down but you know if, if you go back and you read general smedley butler's book War is a racket. Yeah. He wrote about World War One, which, you know, the history books say is this righteous war, but he actually spells out what it was really about even then. And his all of his incursions in Honduras and where was he, like the Philippines and around the world, they well, they wanted something done. They sent Smedley Butler out to do it. And he said that he was just a hitman working for United you know, Fruit Company, the United Fruit Company and, and a variety of Standard Oil and a variety of other companies back then. These companies are still around. They've just changed their names. They still have a hit squad. Yep. Being that I study the ancient past, I can trace men ruling over men back to about 6400 B.C. I can trace rulership that resembles ours back to about 5000 B.C. Yeah, I, I say 9,000 years of the state. Um, that's the number that I've been, best been able to come up with, too. It's really difficult to say. Some people will say 6,000 years, 5,000 years. Um I, I tend to think that as long as there's been tribes, that even at that point, mm -hmm. you know, the weak, the, the strong ruled over the weak. I tend to think that. I bet they took slaves, um, even if those slaves were just wives, you know, or whatever. Um, I, I think that force has been, is all you have to do is take a look at the animal kingdom. Force is a method that they use to, uh, to to get the job done. Yeah. If you've ever had chickens... You know, sweet, sweet, berry, berry white love looks a hell of a lot like rape when the when the rooster does that chicken. It's you know, it ain't pretty. Now, I gotta say, when it comes to pigs, she wants it. <laughs> I've got a few. And she squeals. Well, Kelly Ayotte almost tore that pen apart trying to get to uh, to the visiting dignit visiting senator that I had uh, there. I didn't give him a name. Wick. I just called him Balls because he had his. <laughs> I can trace bicameral assemblies, like our House of Representatives and Senate, back to about 2500 B.C. Most of that is what we commonly call the prehistoric era. So here's my question. What else from before the Egyptian pyramids still rules the lives of women and men? Men no longer pull plows. They no longer start fires with flint, nor do they pull sleds or wooden wheeled carts or rely upon animals for power. We have learned to write, to invent, to navigate, to cover immense distances, and to reach into the heavens. And yet... 
You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's Floor Buster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top quality laminates, and get 26 months special financing. Plus, get even more Floor Buster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. These deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t-shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, November 25th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.63 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,198 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $385. Antiwar.com reports Senator Rand Paul has unveiled a draft declaration of war against the Islamic State that he intends to introduce in the Senate in December, authorizing limited ground operations against the Islamic State. Congress has not declared a single war since World War II when it declared war in the wake of Pearl Harbor. On the one hand, Senator Paul's push is seen as an aim to assert congressional authority to declare wars during an era when wars tend to be unilateral presidential decisions. Yet, his bill is being harshly criticized by anti-war groups as well, which see the draft declaration as risky, particularly to the extent that it defines limited operations well beyond what President Obama has already announced. Justin Raimondo predicted that the attempt to limit the scope was a strategy likely to backfire and simply open the door to a wider war, adding that attempts to limit the introduction of ground troops will never hold. Code Pink co-founder Medea Benjamin also criticized the move, saying that Senator Rand Paul, who has supported the Islamic State war so far, is not his father's son anymore and risks alienating supporters of Ron Paul by positioning himself as more pro intervention. Benjamin added, if people want a candidate who's going to be pro-intervention, they might as well vote for Hillary Clinton. President Obama has yet to comment on the proposal, but has expressed support for an authorization for the use of military force, a legal shorthand occasionally used in wars that fall short of formal declarations. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. USA Today reports Darren Wilson will not face charges for shooting Michael Brown. A St. Louis County grand jury declined to indict Officer Wilson for firing six shots in an August confrontation that killed the 18-year-old. The decision has been long awaited and followed writing that resembled war zone news footage in the St. Louis suburb. 
Prosecutor Robert McAuliffe made the announcement in an unusual nighttime presentation in a courtroom. He spoke at length about media coverage of the case and what he called the unreliability of eyewitness accounts. He said the grand jury weighed evidence and testimony before concluding there was no probable cause to indict the officer, saying the duty of the grand jury is to separate fact from fiction. Brown's family later released a statement saying, We are profoundly disappointed that the killer of our child will not face the consequences of his actions. They urged others who share their pain to channel their frustration in ways that will make a positive change. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Antiwar.com reports NATO officials are officially outraged at Russia again, this time because the Russian Federation signed a treaty of economic and military cooperation with its tiny neighbor, the Republic of Abkhazia. NATO is mad because it does not recognize the right of Abkhazia to exist as an independent republic and wants it eventually annexed into Georgia. They complain the treaty would not contribute to Abkhazia's ceasing to exist. Georgia complained the deal which secured military military backing for Abkhazia's continued existence amounted to a Russian annexation of Georgian soil and a violation of their sovereignty. Abkhazia's status has been disputed since the breakup of the Soviet Union. When the Soviet Union broke up, Georgia sought to include Abkhazia, arguing Soviet-granted autonomy no longer applied. The Republic of Abkhazia reasserted itself at the end of the 1992-93 war and the 2008 Russo-Georgian war, further cementing its status as an independent republic that, because of NATO-Russian tensions, no one in NATO will ever recognize. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's now been seven days since a group of hikers went missing in Maine's Acadia National Park, but rescue crews there are still holding out hope of finding them alive. Autistic reporter Michael Falk is on the scene there. Michael. Hello, Brooke. My socks got wet. That cameraman gave me new socks. I am fine. That's good, Michael, but what's the situation there? The names of the hikers are Casey Allman, Brian Emery, Ashley Thorson. The hikers were last seen 174 hours ago. Since then, three very big storms have hit here. There's a 1.24% chance that all of the hikers are alive. Why are you looking for the hikers? Well, we're still hopeful that we might be able to find them. There's been a break in the weather, so we're hoping that. Over the past seven days, the average high temperature has been 21 degrees Fahrenheit. Over the past seven days, the average low temperature has been 6 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. So we did another sweep of the park from the air, but we didn't see anything. Without shelter, the human body can withstand temperatures this cold for a maximum of three hours. Is there shelter in the forest for the hikers? Not that we know of. They're frozen. Well, we like Shh. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live, well, it's right there in the title. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. We've talked about a variety of things this evening. It's Mark with you. Wayne. And, oh, thank you, Wayne. And Johnny Ray. <laughs> the Liberty Janitor. He had to have the exclusive on the end. 855 free or where lrn.fm is our username on Skype, you can call in there too. So, Wayne, uh, you brought an article in, and uh, you know, it's been some time since you've been able oh, to we'll make sure you get your article in. Sure, sure. I found an article from a fellow named Stephen Hansen. Uh, it's entitled, What is Human Predation? Well, it's people preying upon other people. And sounds, sounds, it's believable, sure. Yeah, and it basically predation is is a form of aggression. That's it, it, I guess the words could be used interchangeably. You usually would think of that as uh, sort of a sexual connotation, like some you know sex offender. Yeah, and that's that's a form of predation for sure. But uh, the he go he starts the article saying the hardest thing to understand about predation is how rampant the practice is, since the average Joe thinks that most predatory acts are good. Is, di- is extremely difficult to get rid of predatory practices. We have a crisis of morality. 
People think it's okay to do something which is wrong as long as it's been voted on, and most people bless it. Yeah, that's right. As long as the, that's what, argumentum ad and uh, ad populum, the idea that it, just because people believe something's true doesn't make it so. Exactly. The collective reality. So when we go to the store, guys, you know, we, we buy some milk and we trade money for milk. And that's not a predatory practice on either of our parts. We choose uh, the store and, and us to trade with each other. You pick which store? You pick uh, what type of milk you want to get? You know, there's lots of choices. Yeah, we don't force them to give us milk, and they don't force us to give them money without some kind of exchange. Uh, if, if I'm stopped when I travel and I'm forced to turn over my wealth to a man holding a gun, I'm a, I'm a victim of human predation. Nobody would argue with that. If I go to purchase a car and the seller tells me nothing is wrong with the car and he knows full well there is, I'm being preyed upon if I then purchase the car. Sure, that's fraud. That's fraud, one right. One case is force, one case is fraud. That's right. I think one could make an argument that the government owns the roads, um, so, you know, therefore, if you get on their road, you can uh, you have to abide by their rules, and if you don't buy, abide by their rules, you'll abide by their punishments. Um, it would be the other side of that argument, but, you know. But that has nothing to do with buying a car. They don't let anyone, um, they, they, they don't let you build uh, build roads that compete with theirs. I uh, don't want to sidetrack the conversation, A, because I'm not at all equipped for it, but I wanted to comment that libertarians put, fra- they talk about fraud a lot alongside force, and I'm pretty much, I'm, I'm okay with fraud. You know, I think fraud is really? on is on the fraudy. If you if you get defrauded, then that's your own fault. I think that you ultimately are responsible um, f- for yourself, but I don't think it's okay. Um, you know, I mean, it's just. It, I think that there's a responsibility um, for the person that's do that the person uh, that's the that's doing the defrauding should be held liable, but you still have to get them to the situation to where they're held liable. So, you know, yeah, I think if a kid comes into your house and steals your TV, he's responsible for making you whole, but that doesn't mean that it's a good idea to leave your door unlocked, right? Right. It, you know, if you leave a uh, bag full of money on the seat of your convertible uh, right out th- and you park it in Main Street and your money disappears, I probably will not shed a tear for you. Well, the author goes on to say that when people talk to each other, it's implied that neither is lying to the other. If either one is lying, that constitutes predatory behavior. Both could be lying. In that case, both are attempting to prey upon the other. That's what I'd like to see. (laughs) That's, yeah, that's called, uh, that's called boxing. (laughs) Don't mind it. Yeah. There are two forms of human predation, force and fraud, as you two mentioned. You can shoot me and pick my, my bones, or you can fool me into walking off a cliff and then pick my bones. Either way, I am the prey and you are the predator. Uh, If the old lady uh, across the street, whose children are all grown now uh, with families of their own, has to sell her home because she can no longer afford the taxes, society in mass has preyed upon her. Agreed. When the ownership of property was taken away from citizens through the passage of laws, which imposed taxes upon the owner of property, an act of uh, human predation took place. I, I would like to point out that old lady uh, whose kids have left the house. If she sent her kids to public school, it is. I have a. I have a more difficult time feeling bad for her um, if the uh, the town comes and ultimately takes her house because she couldn't pay the taxes because she availed herself uh, of the well, the largest uh, amount pool of money out there which is you know the, the public school money most uh, towns it's the largest part of their the line item as far as well it is today but back when her kids were going to school it wasn't maybe th- maybe so it, it was a lot more affordable and, and and it was it was reasonable back then it's Indeed. got it's gotten crazy today i've my kids yeah. have my kid has never gone to uh, public school and and my and my hope is he never will i would have a difficult time telling him no when We've had to pay for it if if we've had to pay for it, but uh, if we haven't, then you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'd I'd try to pay some kind of tuition or something. But in the way in the regard to taxes, most people don't see taxes uh, as predation. We've been blinded to predation by by being taught that the law was for the greater good. In other words, society demanded that some of us walk off a cliff. Now it is picking at the bones of that old lady. How right, do and- we live with that? We ignore it. I think that this is important is is that uh, you essentially have life, liberty, and property. And life is what it is, what, what you have in the present. That's what you're doing right now. 
Your liberty is your ability of what you're going to do in the future. Your property is evidence of what you have done in the past. So if somebody comes and demands a piece of your property, whatever it might be, money, uh, you know, whatever, bananas, I don't care, then they are demanding your liberty, your life, because these are the things with which you created the property that you have. That's why I call um, countries essentially human tax cattle ranches. That's what they are. They tax our labor as though they own it. When the United States government, and I'm not just talking about the U.S. government here, when the U.S. government says we're going to take a loan out against uh, you know these treasury bonds or whatever, what do they intend to pay it back with? They intend to pay it back with in- income tax. With your future labor and your kids and your grandkids and your great-grandkids. Right. An amount of the fruits of your labor. And at this point, they've already sucked up. The, the generations past have taken all my labor. All the money taken in income tax goes towards the, princ- the, the debt on the principal. Now, currently, they're spending the, the, the wages of, you know, I mean, they can't possibly be around this long, but great-grandchildren. That they're spending somebody else's grandchild, great grandchildren's money. It's despicable. These old, stinking, lying, thieving politicians who will be dead in 10 or 20 years are stealing. You're allowing them to steal your great grandchildren's money. People you've never met. They're so young, you have never met hmm. them. You will never see them in all likelihood. It's a despicable system. If you're going to steal money, for God's sake, steal it from the people you're going to spend it on, right? Like it would be one thing if they took our, all our money and said, you know what we need? We need some traffic bumps. Uh, we need some speed bumps in the road. And everybody's going to have to put in for the speed bumps. They don't do that. They don't do that. The United States government has not had a, uh, has never paid off all of its debt. The closest was and under Andrew Jackson in like the 1810s. Um, so you're te- what I'm telling you is the War of 1812, we're still paying on the principle to some extent. <laughs> uh, the things I'm telling you aren't not true. They wouldn't pay off their debt. They've never paid off their debt. That's not how they operate. They are thieves. And their system is never going to be just. Uh, I would like to add that concept of your life, liberty, and property all being the same thing in, you know, in different places and time. That concept was, the first time I ever had it uh, elucidated to me was on that wonderful philosophy of liberty video that I first saw on YouTube. And I recommend it to anyone, philosophy of liberty. Have you seen it, Wayne? Yes, I have. It's, um, it's pithy. It's moving. I like it. It's concise. I'll post it up at uh, the Facebook page at facebook.freetalklive.com. You can call in with your opinions, 855-450-FREE, Free Talk Live. Rebut me, 855-450-FREE. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-856-4195. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate Free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-856-4195. That's 1-800-856-4195. Call 1-800-856-4195. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. 
For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. If you're struggling to pay or haven't been making your student loan payments, listen carefully to this urgent alert. Have you been out of school for 10 or more years and you're still making your student loan payments? Are your student loans past due or even in default? Can't go back to school because of an old student loan problem? Fast Track Student Loans can get your student loans out of default, stop any wage garnishments, stop collection calls, and stop seizure of your tax refund. Give yourself a break. Stop the stress and get your student loan payments down to as little as $25 a month based on what you can afford to pay. One quick 10-minute call could help you solve your student loan problems. So call right now. Not available in all states. Payments may vary based on income. 800-215-6813-800-215-6813-800-215-6813-800-215-6813. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 you're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. The final hour of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. Wayne. And Johnny Ray. 855-450 free. You can call uh, actually on Skype. LRN.FM is our username. And we're reading an article. Where did you say this was from, Wayne, about human predation? It, well, it's been posted on a few sites. The fellow's name who wrote it, is, is, uh, his name is Stephen Hansen. As long as somebody gets credit. Yes. And the, the article is entitled, What is Human Predation? Basically, it's um, perpetrating force or fraud against another group of people or another individual. And the, the thrust of the article is saying that, yes, two individuals can, can predate against each other, but so can government against individuals as well. And the, the fact is that the simple truth is that we've been taught to ignore that if the majority steals, it's still theft. If the majority kills, it's still murder. If the majority rules, we are still ruled. As many of the founding fathers believed, democracy is the most insidious form of tyranny. And that, patterns, uh, that, and that pattern has now saturated human relationships. This is the cause of the fall of civilizations. We know it, those of us who look at history, but nothing will change for the better until we all know it. Hold on just a second, uh, Wayne. I want to take a call here. Uh, James calling in. James, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Wayne. Yes, I hi. This goes against the, I know this goes against the popular view of the of what I like to jokingly call a dope den you're, you're broadcasting from. But would you not agree that a lot of people that live in the civilized society of Keene would think that a 35-year-old man sleeping with a 16-year-old girl is human predation, regardless of the law? There are people who might think that. 
you mean yes or no? Well, I think there's a, a certain. I think as a parent, I would say that that a parent, uh, and the way the laws have been for many many years, even way going way back, is that that a child uh, is under the protection of their parents up to a certain age. So, if six. I already, Wayne, respectfully, I already dismissed the law straight out of hand. I'm not talking about the law. Mm-hmm. Well, don't you think that um, throughout society. human history that it's been sort of a luxury, the idea of dating somebody who's uh, your same age group? I mean, you know, everything I've There's read. Do you, know you know what, Mark Edge, uh, what call, it's called switching the subject? We're talking, obviously, I just wanted to ask a simple yes or no question. May I ask another question about Mark Edge? Cause I don't really care about the a- argument to mad populum stuff. I don't yeah. know what the people of Neither Keene do I, think. Not, I don't know what the people of uh, Arizona asking. think. I don't know. I don't. Th- I oh, think really? that there okay. are people. I th- to answer your question, I think there okay, are people. Can I switch the subject, Wayne? Because I already got an answer. I, I really didn't want to talk about. It. I just wanted to speaking of human depredation. Depre- right. I think you live. You're in a building with a sexual predator, and I know that I'm speaking for James in Arizona and a lot of people in Keener, Keene, New Hampshire. That's just me. But yeah. I wanted. To well, thanks for your you. opinion. Um, so, I mean, what he's referring to is is that Ian Freeman, our main uh, Sunday or ma- our main coast here, he is uh, he's in his early thirties. He's not thirty five, um, but uh, you know, whatever. It's close. And his girlfriend is seventeen. And you know, from what I can tell, her parents. Uh, they, I believe his mother, her mother invited him to uh, Thanksgiving dinner. I don't know what's supposed to, what mm. I'm supposed to do about all this. So, right. you know, do do I wish that my co-host dated uh, was dating a young woman? I, I don't. But you know, her age is what her age is, and she seems as in charge as any woman in a relationship I've ever seen. He's as cowed as any man. So, <laughs> well, well, let's address it. I, I have no problem talking about it. I, I have a, a daughter who's not much younger you know i think it depends on the family how they feel about it i think it depends on on the individual Uh, it's not i don't think there's any hard and fast rule about that but if his parents are okay with it or her parents rather she at that age she's just see it's hard there's a line there too with uh at one time it was 15 the age was 15 of age of consent but even a 16 year old i mean a lot of 16 year olds aren't mature enough to to pick a good guy at that age Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to make some mistakes. We all do. But right. it, it, it's really difficult to say. Now, as a parent myself, uh, when my daughter's 17, I wouldn't want her dating a 35-year-old guy. But some parents would think it's okay. And, and if, if you assume that th- at that age they're under their protection and, and guidance of their parents, if the parents think it's okay, that, and, and, and the daughter's okay with it, and she and, and he, I, I saw them here briefly, and they seem to get along well, and, and she, you know, I can't judge that. Yeah, I, I would also say that, the only reason I think a parent has a say is because they're providing the roof. Mm-hmm. And if they're not providing the roof, then what say do they have? Um, you know, okay. That, you know, I mean, that's it. You're going to, at some point or another, you got to strike out on your own. You got to live your own life. And I would say that if you choose to go against your parents' wishes in that area, um, that you know, there's been a lot of groundwork laid. I'm not going to call it bad parenting. I'm just going to say there's a lot of groundwork laid. I try to be, for my son, a resource. I try to talk to him about, uh, you know, things in a fashion, get him thinking about issues. Uh, I, I want him to understand that when he comes up on life's problems, and we're all going to do that, that his dad is somebody who uh, to whom he does not wish to lie. Because ultimately, I went to prison because I lied to my dad. Um, if I would have told him the truth, he would have gotten me the right lawyering in, uh, lawyer and uh, advice that I should have gotten. But I was afraid of getting caught and I was afraid of what was going to happen. I was afraid of punishments. And where was I getting most of the punishments in my life? I was getting them from parents. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I, you know, it's not that there aren't consequences for actions. There certainly are. But I think that for me and my family, I'm going to try very be- the very best to be a resource when um you know when when these things come up because there's somebody out there that wants to put my kid in prison in a few short years yeah it's become a racket it's a it's a racket yeah it sure has let's go on with the human uh predation predation article article. yes so so that would have been uh have to be taught in schools that that all these examples yeah sure and the pattern has now saturated human relationships, that of predation. This is the cause of the fall of civilizations. 
We know it, those of us who look at history. But nothing will change for the better until we all know it. But that would have to be taught in the schools, wouldn't it? And it isn't likely to happen when the funding for the school is in itself an act of predation. We are witnessing the fall of this once great country, in his words. We weren't defeated by any great power in any great battle. We are beaten by the idea that the truth doesn't matter, and as long as we believe, believe something strongly enough, we can bend and twist reality with impunity. Do you, do you go with that, that the, the, the sort of hearkening back to the time when the government was good and just? Because I don't. It was I, just smaller and more benign and, and more crippled. But it was still the same thing. It was just a smaller, uh, less harmful beast. It was a cockroach instead of a, a dinosaur. It seems like you can always find, you go every decade in human in, in U.S. history, and you can find that group of people that were beset upon by the government uh, against whom the, the state was used in whatever way. I think back to the Whiskey Rebellion where... Uh, George Washington sends uh, George Lighthorse Lee, I think I've got the names right, to quell a revolution. The guy who read, uh, led a revolution less than a decade earlier, or about a decade earlier, goes and sends uh, a, a, you know, a force to stop a revolution. Lighthorse Harry Lee, I believe. Okay. Um, you know, you'll have to check for yourself, folks. 855-450, free, free talk live. For all our loyal listeners, it's time for another giveaway. Over the next 30 days, our friends at SupernaturalSilver.com are giving away six 16-ounce Supernatural Silver liquid valued at nearly $100 per bottle or their skin and body gel priced at $49.98. All you have to do is enter and win at GCNlive.com. Hurry, contest ends December 5th. GCN can give you and your loved ones a fighting chance with the Supernatural Silver giveaway at GCNlive.com. This holiday season, give the gift that keeps on giving, an in-home freeze dryer from Harvest Right. With your very own freeze dryer, you'll be able to freeze dry the food your family loves. Because we live in uncertain, difficult times, what better way to show your love for your family than to buy them a gift that helps them preserve food they can use now or in 25 years. Go to HarvestRight.com and find out how you can get your in-home freeze dryer. Layaway is available. That's HarvestRight.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck. 
stuck in the left right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind as evidenced by what has occurred on this show throughout this <laughs> evening. <laughs> 855-450-FREE. It's Mark with you. Wayne. And featuring Johnny Ray. <laughs> tell, tell you about BuzzBox. You can get a free pound of the best of the best coffee. Great coffee. 100% organic Top 1% grade Arabica beans. Did you say orgasmic? It's, it's, it's orgasmic coffee, as a matter of fact. Well, it's delicious. I'll, I'll go that far. Um, and and it's uh, shade grown, which uh, you know really important if you want to. It, it'll help you with that acid reflux that you might get from coffee. Also, it's good for the songbirds and helps sustain the forests uh, where it's grown. Buzzbox is competitively priced with other high-end coffees. Uh, but and, but what they do that's different is is they give us back a little bit of the proceeds so that we can give micro loans through kiva.org, and we've given given micro loans to people around the world, and uh, it's really great because once they pay their loan back, then we can give it out to somebody else. This is a hand up rather than a handout. They have to work for the things that they're going to get, and they know what they want. It's not some free thing that uh, you've given them, thinking that you know that's going to be best for them. Coffee.freetalklive.com for your free pound. It's coffee.freetalklive.com. If coffee is orgasmic, Mark has very angry orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> Rabid woodpecker. Yeah. Well, I, I, I do drink about a pot of Buzzbox coffee a day, but I don't, uh, I have to get the decaf. Good. And it's also water decaf. Uh, if, you know, if you know anything about the uh, decaffeinating process, there's some of it's chemically decaffeinated and some of it's water decaf. And uh, for me, I prefer the water decaf because I you know, just don't know about all these uh, the other chemicals. It's not mm-hmm. that uh, it's not to say that uh, I think that they're dangerous for you, but when you drink as much as I do, that's it's a little scary. Oh. Tarzan like water better. Let's go to Larry calling in from West Virginia. Larry, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? talking about some prediction thing with the taxes and stuff. Yeah. You know, the, the government has uh, you got like Al Capone and all these guys back years ago doing this and the government ruled it unconstitutional and illegal. But as long as the government's doing it, it's all <laughs> well and good and fair. Right, it's, it's protection until it, the I, government does it. Yeah, I had kids. I put them through school. I paid my taxes. Right. At what point in time do I get a break from that? Never. As long as you're drawing exactly. breath, you're never going to get it. You could just decide I'm not working anymore, and I suppose you could just go on the dole. Yeah, but they're going to throw you out of your house. They might very well. But you bought and paid for it. Yep. You know? I mean, at least if you buy an automobile, if you don't pay the the, 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 the place for it, if you don't get it inspected, if you... You can still park at the field. It's still yours. You know? Yeah. Sort of. Sort of. But the government will take. But if you don't pay the, the taxes on the property. Uh, but if you don't pay the taxes on the property, they're, they're going to evict you. Yep. That's true. You can't pitch a tent and go out and live, you know, just out like the backyard or whatever. No, 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 no. You're gone. You're down the road. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's ultimately what it comes down to is you're not, you don't own a home. You. Rent it from the government. Yeah, 
Yes, you rent it from the government. And you have the right, right to that, transfer that, the title. That, that, was my, that was my thought on the whole thing, and I was just like, you know, um, if you force something, it's wrong, but if we're the government, we can force it, and it's all okay. So Thanks so much. And that's what I saw with it. I heard you guys pretty much do the same thing. Indeed, Larry. Thanks for the call. In the City of God, St. Augustine tells the story of a pirate captured by Alexander the Great who asked him, how dare he molest the sea? How dare you molest the whole world, the pirate replied. Because I do it with a little ship only, I am called a thief. You doing it with a great navy are called an emperor. Indeed. That's precisely it. And it's, uh, you know, St. Augustine saw this way back then. Do you believe this story, by the way? I mean, this has to be apocryphal, right? I believe it 50%, and I disbelieve it 50%. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you which 50%, but it's precisely 50%. <laughs> Indeed. Um, go on, uh, Wayne, if you would, Actually, please. I think that was just about the end of the article. Okay. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, that's what it really comes down to is, is the government is an institution that claims for itself the monopoly privilege, uh, the right just granted from God privilege to rule over you. Y- you are told that you have signed a social contract, which you know you have not signed. You know you cannot find. You know that they will change the provisions of the social contract whenever they wish. You know that you cannot change any of the provisions of the social contract at any point that you wish. But I do not like green eggs and ham. Right. This is not a social contract, and it never was. I, it's I, a big fat lie. I got into a Facebook argument with a gentleman productive. about <laughs> the social contract. I tried to say that it was it was a theory. It was a it was it was. It, it was descriptive. It wasn't real. There was no such real thing that was the social contract, no physical thing. And he, it, he, it was, I could imagine him red in the face. He just kept saying, yes, it is real. It is real. This is established political soci- jargon, sociological <laughs> yeah. fact. It's jargon, right? exactly. You know, and that's sort of true when you say, uh, for instance, like I, I could say I'm married to my wife, Laura. But how do you, you know, prove it? At least I've got a piece of paper when it comes to the marriage uh, that exactly. I got from the government, mind you. Yeah, that and maybe one has that I got from the church on it. Did uh, you ask to see the the paper that you signed? I I I think I tried to 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 pursue that avenue, but it was just it didn't it was there was too great of a disconnect between us. Well, that that's exactly if you think about how powerful repeating a lie over and over again is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that shows it. It illustrates it. It shows it because it, it short circuits the logic centers of the brain. Let's go to Nathan calling in on Skype. Nathan, you're on, excuse me, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. What's on your mind? Well, uh, first of all, I'd like, to, I'd like to compliment Johnny Ray. Don't, don't let anyone tell you that your, um, your oration voice is, uh, is not suitable for, for radio. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. So there's something that's been on my mind for a while, and uh, there's no particular reason I called tonight. But uh, it doesn't matter. It's it free up. talk live. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not sure if any of you are gun enthusiasts, so uh, I don't know how interesting you might find this topic. But I don't know that much thinking, about them. I've been Same thinking here. about gun ownership in America since. Uh, no, for, for full disclosure, I you know don't really own any guns or go shooting a lot or anything like that. But I have noticed that gun ownership has been on the decline for the last several decades. Really? And when you, well, that's what the story that I found online was saying that gun ownership as a whole in America. And if you look at other English Commonwealth countries like Australia and Canada and so on, uh, the writing on the wall looks pretty clear as to where that's headed. Yeah, but they outlawed them there. Yeah, yeah, but once you once you uh, don't use a right or uh, or, yeah, or engage in a right, then it's easy to take. Once fifty percent of the people believe that guns are uh, really just barbaric tools that there is no use for, then then it's it. But you know, I think that right. was true up until about two thousand nine. All of a sudden, people freaked out when they thought the new president was going to be a gun grabber. So you saw millions and millions of of, of firearms being sold. So I wonder how recent those statistics that you're you're viewing are. I don't remember the year, uh, but it was uh, over the course of several decades. So I assume that it's associate. It's just a general trend from I don't know growth of cities and uh, passage of laws and changes in attitude and so forth. Yeah. Um, and so if that's the case, 
Uh, you know, it makes me think of what Michael Dean always says that the uh, the drug warriors once mer once weed is legal, uh, you know, they'll just they're not going to let them go and shrink their bureaucracy. They'll just switch them over to confiscating guns and they'll take your guns on the way to the dentist or whatever. And uh, I was just curious, what do you guys think about that? Well, I don't propose to know what they're going to do with all the extra cops that, that aren't going to be, uh, you know, spending man hours on um, marijuana. But I would suspect that they're probably just turned over to traffic crimes and things like that. Um, you know, I know that governments in many cases don't like guns, but many of the people in the government do like them. So I'm skeptical as to what we know what's going to happen with them. 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Hey everyone, my Ghost 80% AR-15 project was a total success. Thank you, Guns80.com. Thank you. I bought my Ghost AR-15 at Guns80.com. It's everything I expected more. Just got a note from my buddy Mark, and now they're having a huge Black Friday and a big Cyber Monday sale. Guess Christmas is coming early this year. I'm definitely ordering one for my brother on Black Friday because the price drops to 400 bucks. Yes, I did just say that. 400 bucks on Believable. At guns80.com, the big sale is on. Begins Friday, November 22nd, and ends December 1st. So hurry now. Sale prices for Ghost ARs again, 400 bucks. Black Friday will be a good day. Get your Ghost AR-15 at guns80.com. Sale is on right now at guns80.com. That's guns80.com. Guns and the number 8080.com. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas to everyone from our good friends at guns80.com. The big sale is on. I'll see you there. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm.
Free Talk Live, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. I might be able to squeeze you in here in the final segment of the uh, this evening's the show. remaining moments. The remaining moments. 855-453. It's Mark. Wayne. And, wait for it, Johnny Ray. The Liberty G. And you can go to freetalklive.com, and uh, we have a, uh, an email list that we, we will update you with the new stations we've got. You'll find out about the show, um, you know, the news that occurs. Just go to news.freetalklive.com, um, and there you can find the updates list, the Facebook, the Google+, the Twitter, whatever it is that you uh, – whatever way you want to connect with Free Talk Live, it's news.freetalklive.com. Let's go to Daryl in West Virginia. Daryl, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey guys, thanks for having me on. Sure, what's on your mind? Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you guys for your program. Um, I've been listening to you for you know several years, and my son's in college, and uh, you kind of turn him on to you guys. And a lot of the, you know a lot of young you know kids in college, you know, you have a lot of the oh, uh, let's just say a lot of the very the professors are very influential and sure. Some say good, some say good things, some say bad things. But uh, what they've learned by listening to your station has really opened up their mind and their ears. So uh, thank you for the education process. It's, it's greatly appreciated, especially for the young adults that'll be, you know, guiding this country in the future. Well, hopefully, we're uh, still learning too. <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, thank you, thank you so much. My question was, um, my son was telling me. Um, I guess two or three days ago, he's going to college uh, at uh, UNC, and uh, he was told that he was listening uh, to the History Channel that, and it had to do with uh, martial law and executive orders. And I, I'm asking actually a question. Uh, the question I had was, uh, he was told that um, that President Obama signed in an executive order uh, in his first year. That had to do with uh, martial law, but it, it, it took it to the next step. Basically, uh, if you know something bad happened, you, you know, like um, uh, where they had to execute martial law, where they had bomb threats or whatever the case may be, that they could go in and basically pretty much confiscate everything in your home, your food, your <laughs> your jewelry, your bank accounts, and and they could actually uh, make you go to work. For the good of the, it sounds like communism when you start thinking. For the good of the country, to secure the country's future. In other words, put you to work and, and assign you a job task. Uh, so, do y'all know anything about that? That that, that was something of what, that he actually put into order, or is that just? I don't talk? know. I don't know anything about that, Daryl. I know that. The past month or so, there's been a gentleman by the name of Peter Dale Scott who talks, he's been talking about the deep state, and he says that for decades, there have been continuity of government mm -hmm. plans for a nuclear strike or something like that. And and he says wow. that after 9-11, the COG plans were put into effect, and, and basically the Constitution has been suspended since then. And It wasn't uh, suspended before that? Well, I would argue that it was, or it's, it wasn't worth the paper it was written on to begin with, whatever. Right. But um, so, so there's a guy who has been on the Internet talking about this continuity of government and saying that, that some crazy stuff happened and underground offices were populated after 9-11 on account of this continuity of government planning that, that Cheney and, and Rumsfeld have been eager to put into plans for years. I don't know. Well, you know, during the Iran-Contra hearings back in the 80s when they, were, when they were questioning Oliver North, that actually came up. And there were a lot of documents being shredded at the time, allegedly, in his office but they touched upon it a bit, and then they kind of buried it. But it was actually, that was the first time that it really came out into the open, was during those hearings. Yeah, somebody had, somebody asked Oliver North if they, they, were, they had plans to suspend the Constitution or something. And then and somebody the, else, maybe the committee chairman, said, Joe Lost Biden, Terrell, believe it or let's not. Let's table this for now. We're going to talk about this at, 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 in, a more, in a less transparent venue. Yeah. Joe Biden. 
was the one questioning him, too. Yeah, that guy, uh, <laughs> it doesn't seem like <laughs> he has a grasp on uh, reality at all. Um, so I'm looking at factcheck.org and snopes.com, and neither one of them seem to think that there's uh, um, that Obama has ever issued, used executive powers to create martial law. But you know these are the you know the the the, the top the top uh, the sort of the the surface level um, answers. So I don't know. You have to find these things out. I don't know what the difference between martial law and what we have today is mm-hmm. uh, precisely. Um, you know the martial law says that the government uh, essentially can do what it want wants when it wants how it wants, and I'd say we have that pretty close. Yeah, actually, most of, from what I re- remember, most or if not all the the. Executive orders are filed online. You can pull them up. You can look them up. Yeah, I think this is something that you could probably do a certain amount of uh, research for and uh, research of and 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 find out. So, um, you know, I had an interesting article here from the Salt Lake Tribune, um, sltrib.com, and you know, I hesitated to bring it up because it sounds kind of uh, bombastic, but I think it's an interesting fact. I call it a factoid, but a factoid isn't real. So uh, an interesting little fact, facty tidbit here. Over a five-year period, data show that fatal shootings by police officers in Utah ranked second only to homicides of Im- intimate partners. So I think we all know that the most likely person to kill us is living in our home, right? Like we know that the, that's those are the statistics. Um, the second most likely in at least Utah, where they have done these numbers— is a police officer. In the past five years, more Utahns have been killed by police officers than gang members or drug dealers or from child abuse. And so far this year, deadly force by police has claimed more lives, 13, including a Saturday shooting in South Jordan, than has violence between um, spouses and dating partners. So, wow. You know, at this point, uh, it's, it's, it's the race is on to see whether who's going to be more deadly. And uh, it's not that I don't think the police should be able to use deadly force to, to, to pr- protect themselves in certain circumstances. I, it's not that I don't believe that at all. But I think that this is indicative of a very big problem. If the deadliest thing in Utah is the cops, then the chances are good that they're among the deadliest things in your town. And I don't mean diseases and stuff like that. Most murderous. If the most murderous, the most killingest things are cops, then in your town, they're liable to be in the top five, too. So if that's the case, if the people that are slated to protect us are killing us, then it seems like we need new systems for protecting ourselves. Well, the police departments throughout the country are being increasingly uh, federalized and militarized. And 20, 30 years ago plus, they, they worked mostly for the local community, the local people. And so they had a, they, their object. Their objective was to keep the peace. So there's a big difference today. Yeah, in Ferguson, um, you know what you're seeing there. Besides, you know whatever you're seeing, the very least which you can say, at the very least, you can say that this is a group of people that do not feel served by their government, right? Yeah. If in the Michael Brown circumstance we had chest cams, uh, b- body cams, footage of what happened. There, you know, this whole uh, narrative of uh, hands up, don't shoot. You know, maybe it's true, maybe it's not. I don't know the answer. There's evidence on both sides, and the people on both sides believe the evidence that they've got, whatever it might be. That's not what my point is here. Um, the problem is, is that we don't know. We, the constituency, don't know. And this lack of transparency in the area of law enforcement is what's causing the problem. Now, admittedly, it doesn't happen in foreign countries. Many of the European countries, they don't have nearly the problem of police shootings that they do in the United States. No one has given me an answer to, that makes me comfortable as to why police officers in Germany fire uh, you know, 80 rounds or whatever in a year and police officers in the United States do that into a car with unarmed teenagers. Um, you know, I don't know the reasons, but I think the best way to turn it around that will protect both the officers and civilians is to have cameras. I think that you got to go a little further because we have dash cams in police cars and we can't always get the footage. So I think that it needs to be streamed through the internet and we can do this. I mean, cell phones stream video to the internet all the time. It wouldn't be that difficult. 
But that's my solution, and not a bad idea. I'd rather I, I'd be happy to hear yours. You can uh, inter- interact us and in, interact with us in the meantime at facebook.freetalklive.com or just freetalklive.com. It's been Mark with you, Wayne and Johnny. Ray. Thank you for coming, Wayne. Freetalklive.com. While digital communications coordinator Brian Tyler is considered by many of his co-workers to be the cutest guy around the offices of Western Psychological Publishing Services, employees conceded today the 27-year-old is not even particularly attractive. Brian gets a lot of attention from girls around here, but if I saw him in a bar, I don't know if I would even notice him. Put him next to Glenn or Mike, and then, sure, he actually looks pretty good. Co-workers explained to reporters that by everyday standards, Tyler would at best be considered considered moderately good looking, but explained that given the abundance of unattractive men at the publishing firm, female employees often go out of their way to make small talk with the 27 year old at his desk or eat lunch with him in the office kitchen. I saw him walking to work the other day and half the guys on the street were easily better looking than him. But here, he's the hottest guy around. It's almost kind of sad. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd still f him. This is the Onion News Network. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, November 25th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.63 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,000.